for the classics this afternoon. You can see that El Camino of Eric Conacher is going to be out on the racetrack this afternoon. And then it's Ronald Casica with the full starting position. Dale Chestnut will be in the 613. Eric Conacher, like we said, in the 640. Face Disney is going to be in the 698. And Bill Wilson in the 601. And look at already. Gene in turn number one, Forest County, Pottawatomie. The big sponsor here this weekend, and Dan Bojai, he's already out to an early lead. Yeah, the undefeated man here in Chapoff Road trying to make it seven for seven to kick off this brand new racing series. It's Bojai up front, and then Grandin's own Adam Weber running in second. Good to see him back out here after having some mechanical issues earlier this year. Well, speaking of mechanical issues, looks like we already got a little bit of smoke going by the sweets here. Yes, we do have sweets in Grandin. But it's second start already. Eric Conitzer getting a little out of shape coming towards Forest County. Mottawatomie turn number one. Conitzer's going to have the edge over Dale Chestnut. Good to see Dale Chestnut back in the seat as well. He's had Nick Big filling in for him all year. But Dale's here to win a ring, and he wants that ring. He does not, he's not going to let anybody else drive it for him this weekend. No, absolutely not. There's a good look at face Dan Steen. Normally our flag man, he's out there tearing up some dirt this afternoon. There's a good look at our leaders in the classics. Good battle for second going on there between Monty and Adam Weber. Weber looks to be a little bit off the pace and a lot of mayhem going on there behind Boshaw, but Boshaw is already checking out on this field as you see Weber well behind in second. Yeah, Dan Boshaw coming by but will be our starting line throughout this weekend. At 426, just locked and loaded for this weekend. Puts a lot of heart and soul into his program. As we go back towards the classics, there's Eric Connors. They're getting a little sideways, opening up the door to Dale Chestnut. Yeah, good battle for the race lead here in classics round number seven. You see him come through what we call Argonne Corner, named after the Argonne Fire Department that has been the, the track workers there for years and years. Then they went out that long, long back straightaway. That's the highest speed section of the course. Absolutely wound right up to the top of your RPM range, and then it's hard on the brakes into this left hand corner. Yeah, you really gotta get hard on the binders going to your Oh, looks like Goddard gets a little sideways, gives a lead off to Dale Chestnut, so. The change is happening right in front of you, coming back towards Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one. And you were talking about the speeds going back towards the starting line, and Jared Brooks actually, I was watching on his Instagram, he's driving about 94 miles an hour coming into that 180. And Kyle, I heard him talking at the parade, he's like, oh, we're close to 100 miles an hour. So the speeds are just going to keep going up and up throughout this weekend as the tracks should dry out very, very nicely. Another good look at our battle for the lead here in Classics. Chestnut still holds that edge, but look at Conitzer trying the inside line. See, that's what happens. You go down on the bottom to that inside of the gravel pit. It might look like the preferred line. You go down, you lose all that traction, and that back end just comes out from underneath you. And now he has to go back and do his homework. Yeah, this clay surface here at Crandon. Makes for some really great, fast, competitive racing, but if there's a little bit of water that's sitting on top of that clay, it becomes extremely slick. Yeah, definitely. It creates like an ice rink out there for these guys, so they really got to be easy on the gas pedal. Like I always say, you really want to drive like there is an egg underneath your pedal because in some sections it could freeze up, but you already look. Look at the dust start to come. Absolutely, and, and weather conditions are going to be perfect for short course off road racing today. Low 70s, a little bit of breeze, just enough to keep the dust away from the fans here. Perfect day for racing as we take a look at Rowdy Randy Scheidel. Yeah, Scheidel, he said I put a brand new body on this thing again this weekend. I told him, like, now you have to keep it on. <laughs> no, nobody can ruin a, a race car body quite like Randy Scheidel. We've seen him upside down, I think, once every weekend of Jam Off Road competition this year. Yeah, we've seen him at ERX Motor Park really, really fast. He showed some good laps and caught into a couple different bursts through the split lanes and put it upside down. So he needs to put his head down if he wants to catch Danny Boshaw right now. He just checked out on this field early in this race. Yeah, Scheidel currently running in second. And it looks like Cody Summers is running in third. Scheidel bonds on and off. That Polaris Razor jump. There's a good look at a camera shot coming into turn number one. What does that mean? 
calamity corner into the finish line there. Turn six, seven, eight. There's so many turns here at Granite. It's so fast. You really just have to put the hammer down and have a good setup on your car. Dan Boshaw right now. Yeah, nobody's putting the hammer down like Danny Boshaw right now, trying to make it seven wins in a row. And it feels kind of strange to associate this word with Dan Boshaw, but he's a rookie here at Formula 4x4 and absolutely taking the rest of this field to task this year. Yeah, Ben, he really put him in a good truck in 2020. He got his feet wet a couple times last year, but he's putting together a good program as he comes off the front double. The truck's landing really nice, going up through the barn turn, the famous barn turn, and it gets so slippery through here. Really got to babysit that throttle later on in the weekend, especially for that cup race coming up on Sunday. You really have to have the right tire pattern to grab all that blue group here. And, and you know, a couple weeks ago at ERX, we talked about how the track uh, not deteriorates, but how much it changes throughout the weekend. Brandon's susceptible to that as well. Like you said, blue groove, there's a lot of holes that we'll see develop. In fact, so predictably that there are holes that we see in the same exact spot every year here at Grandin. So, something else to keep on, this track will change throughout this week. Yeah, it definitely will change, and it's pretty much a big speedway as you watch. Dale Chesson coming off of that 613 into that famous gravel pit. And I think Cameron soon do you justice when you get down that gravel pit. If you want to run that high side, you're up 7, 8, 9 feet up on the top, and you really have to defend yourself and go for it because know as well as I do later on when that top side comes in it gets very very quick absolutely that's one of the places on this race course where you'll see passes on the outside we're looking at our leader Dale Chestnut in classics trying to win another ring he's one of the most accomplished drivers that we will see out here this weekend in our sportsman class he's been doing this a long long time yeah he really has more trophies in this class than anyone on the map and he really knows how to get around here in Grand and Wisconsin and here comes Dan Bosha. Once again, coming into Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one, blazing orange colors on the car. And why wouldn't you want to be seen? You won six in a row, today's number seven, if you can hold it together. And he really wrenches on his own truck. He has a big group of guys that really help him on and off. And he's been around a long, long time. I had a chance to race with him back in 2011 and 12. And just he, he puts his heart and soul in it. He's a businessman, he works on sandblasting equipment, big Ponzi's. I mean, anything you can think of, they clean it up, they paint it, DVR restoration. I mean, he knows how to paint it, he knows how to win in a truck too, so those two go together pretty well. Absolutely, as we are about to come to our mid-race caution, our Grand International Off-Road Raceway pace truck is out there. Dan Boshaw will be your leader in Formula 4x4 at the halfway point here in round number seven. Halfway done with this Formula 4x4 class in the classics. There's another good look at Dan Boja on the 426. Just rolling through. Yeah, smooth, smooth sailing there in those first four laps for Dan Boja. Doesn't get much better than that as you see our battle for the lead in classics come into the line. Chestnut, tell you what, Connors are really reeled him in over those last two laps, so. That battle probably a long way from over here. All right, well, we're going to check in with Haley Shanley. Haley, uh, what's going on down there? A fun fact on him, he actually has 11 world championship titles to his credit, spanning over three decades. We haven't seen him yet this season with championship off-road, so it is a special treat to have him here this weekend for world championship weekend. But that last name, I think it's one of those that is synonymous with short course off-road racing. Hey, Shane Stetsny up in the booth. Any relation there? Yeah, Faye would actually be my uh, second cousin. <laughs> and, and people mistake us that we're uh, father and son, and I mean... If you're going to make a mistake about my relation, I, I could do a lot worse than having Faye as my dad. But, of course, <laughs> my dad's been out there, uh, the finish line flag man here. He's been involved here all 51 years as well. So, you like I said at the top of the show, Brent, I grew up here. Yeah, you did. I remember just as a kid coming here, I remember me and you just reminiscing about these races over and over. Now we get to call it in the booth. And, I mean, we're in the best seat in the house. We get to watch these great races throughout this 
51st anniversary here in Granite, Wisconsin. And like I said, I've been coming since I was three and a half years old. I mean, I don't want to tell you how old I am now, but I've been coming for 30 years and it's been unreal every day. Even my brother and my girlfriend and I were coming to the track this morning and my brother's like a little kid at Christmas. He's like, dude, we're going to Crandon. I'm like, if half these people have that feeling, I can't imagine why we get 60 plus thousand people. Absolutely, the, the, the most passionate fans in the sport and all of short course racing, they grew up watching racing here just like you and I did. So this is the place where, where we revere that history that we've been talking about. We talked about Face Destiny with his 11 world championship rings already. And it's also the place where we make history though. This weekend, CJ Greaves and Rob McCacker each have a shot to tie Jack Flannery for the most Labor Day Cup race wins. Wow, that says something right there. And that's what's so awesome about Crane, and they bring the best in the country. And I'll tell you, that Pro 2, Pro 4 race tomorrow afternoon is going to be some kind of showdown. This is the mecca of off-road racing, Crandon. And can't thank everyone enough here at Champ Off-Road letting us be a big part of this new series here. And remember, go and tell your fans, go tell your friends, Go tell your family, everyone, go to championshipoffroad.com and live, live feed all weekend long, and you're going to see some great racing. Yeah, I mean, the every race this year for the Champ Off-Road Series has just knocked it out of the park. I mean, we went to ERX for rounds one and two, then went to Dirt City Motorplex, rounds three and four. Great racing, both of those places. Went back to ERX again. Phenomenal racing. Starting to see that defining rivalry of the series between C.J. Greaves and Kyle LeDuc as they're starting to mix it up, starting to play a little bit rougher with one another. So that's something else to look for later on this weekend. Yeah, definitely. You're going to see the gloves are going to be off here this weekend. This is championship weekend. If you're not going to have anything going on in your life at any given time that's not that important, every year I write down the Cranon, Fall Cranon, I haven't missed one, like I said, and there's a lot of people, a lot of family, friends. We just keep on coming back, and the facility is just amazing. Well, looks like our Cranon International Off-Road Raceway pace truck is about to pull off, so we're going to go back to Green Flag Racing. This is the D&D Services Classics and Conrad's Auto Salvage Formula 4x4, and Dan Boshaw is in control of the field coming to the green. Watch as Dan Boshaw between those two cones can take off at any time. Watch the flag, man. He holds it right to the end, Dan Bosha trying to get a jump and does. Yeah, capped out right away over Rowdy Randy Scheidel there running in second. It's still Summers in third, and then one of the Holtzke trucks there running in fourth. Scheidel trying to get a nice run on that restart. Not really do much right now. Dan has just been that fast, and once he gets out of that clean air chain, it's not hard to see, and that's what's the best part about off-road racing. You get that clean air, you get a break, and just pick the lines you want as we're looking back at the classics now. Remember, that's Dale Chestnut and Condenser right behind him. We'll see if Condenser, if he has anything for it. Aaron's been fast. He made a little mistake in the gravel pit. We'll see if he can clean it up. Here we go. Yeah, if not for that one mistake, I think it would have been even closer there at the halfway mark, but... For now, Chestnut is in control of the field. Back to Green Flag Racing. Chestnut trying to open a gap. Here comes Condenser. Condenser going to try to look to the inside. Watch as they come off this little floater jump. Yeah, we saw Condenser try the inside down in that Polaris Razor gravel pit. We'll see if he tries it again. Actually, looks like he's going to set up outside this time, Brent. And that's what I was talking about earlier. He's trying to get that outside lane in. It's a little too early for that. That's just filling the cab with Bruce Dale Chestnut. Hanging it out over the Polaris Razor Jump coming into the final turn. Right around this bend will be what is the finish line here in Cranon, Wisconsin. And I can't say how fast these cars are really going. I mean, these classes just seem to get quicker and quicker year after year. And we're seeing time for them. Yeah, no, no shortage of speed uh, across all the classes, even these classes, guys. Dale Chestnut, he's told me that he's topped out over 100 miles an hour on this backstretch before. Unreal. Dale Chestnut been around for a long, long time, rotating it in. One of my favorite corners here in Cranon. Oh, look at that. 
Over rotating a little bit. Little mistake there by Chestnut, but it looks like he's lost touch completely with Connitzer. Yeah, Connitzer's nowhere to be found. On our camera, there he is. Aaron Connitzer coming almost to a rolling stop. I don't see no smoke coming out of that machine, so maybe something broke in the drivetrain. Yeah, he's trying to get in gear. Maybe he's just slipped out of gear. We'll have to wait and see as we go back up towards the front. And Formula 4x4, four four, five out of seven laps in the books. And Dan Bullshaw still out front. Man, there's Connitzer. Yeah, tough break for Aaron Connitzer. Came into this weekend with a lot of optimism. He's leading points here at Classics. Chase trying to chase down his third World Championship break tomorrow and our uh, World Championship Saturday. But tough break because he's out of this one, but tell you what, no tough breaks right now for Dan Boshaw. It's been smooth sailing for him. Yeah, Dan Boshaw's really putting everything behind him coming off that front double. Coming off the barn jump once again, remember. We should be coming to the white flag here, coming up here shortly. See a little bit of excess fuel coming out of the exhaust. No harm, no foul, just burning it off. Full sounding truck of damn bow shot going into the gravel pit. Good to see that he's still running the uh, anger management. That's the name of the truck that uh, Ben Pesa gave to the truck when he built it and was driving it. So. And Boshaw still flying the anger management scheme on the side there. You said it, Brent. We're coming to the white flag, so one lap to go here in Formula 4x4 Classics. Dan Boshaw cruising right now, absolutely checked out on the rest of this field. Coming into this weekend, 6-for-6 six for, six for Dan Boshaw, a former super stock truck champion, multiple-time champion. As we'll see, Super Stock Truck coming up our second to the last race of the day before we turn on the lights here. And the big house says, Dan Boshaw just racking off another lap, Shane, coming in the back section. Yeah, one last time into this hairpin. Like we said, this is the highest speed section into the tightest corner of this whole course, so keep an eye on that corner later on today in racing action. But no problems whatsoever for Dan Boshaw. One final time into Forest County Potawatomi Turn 1. Dan Boshaw cruising on his way to a seventh win in a row in his first year here at Formula 4x4. Coming in front of the crowd here in Grand Wisconsin going through the bar turn going by the suites one final time, like he said, Shane, and he's been pretty much perfect here this afternoon once again. Right, Orange 426, Rally Acon Board, a big supporter of his program, DVR Restoration, as well as Conrad's Auto Salvage. So, so cool to see this group of guys in Formula 4x4 sticking together, keeping this class alive. One last time through Calamity Corner, checkered flag is out. And Dan Boshaw is your first winner of the weekend here at round number seven at Grand International Off-Road Raceway. Dan Boshaw collecting seven for seven in 2020. Here's Dale Chestnut coming around a couple turns to go. See if he can lock another one down in the wind column. Bonsai off the sweet jump down into the gravel pit one final time. Truck looking very, very smooth. Remember, Nick Bing, super stock truck champion, was in that seat for a couple different rounds. But now Dale Chestnut, he's like, man, give me the reins back. I want to win. He will navigate through Calamity Corner one last time. There is the checkered flag. And Dale Chestnut is your winner here in round seven in the... D&D Services Classics race. There is your winner there in Formula 4x4 trucks. Dan Boshaw once again going to come to victory lane. Going to collect his seventh first place trophy of 2020 here in championship off-road. What is it about Cranon for you? Obviously, it's showing that this place really suits your driving style. Yeah, the Jeeps like the big track. They don't handle real well on that short, tight stuff, and uh, we like to come out here and stretch your legs. Who would you like to thank for this podium? We'd like to thank uh, Knudsen Machine, 
uh, competition specialists, Global Fab, and our primary sponsor, uh, Pure Class Vodka. That's the one the crew likes. <laughs> A job well done. John Holter, Thank bronze. <laughs> Cody Somers in second. A great points run for you. Give us a reaction to that performance. Yeah, it's uh, just keep her pinned all the way through turn one and trying to get up here on the box. And it was a blast. I just loved that land rush start there. Who would you like to thank for this one? I got to thank Marshall Rigging and Crane Service, TNS Trucking, Diggers Pub and Grub, Fire Protection Specialist, uh, Ledger Lady, my family, and everybody that helps me out. I thank you. Cody Summers, congratulations. And Dan Boshaw, our first place finisher, you're undefeated there. It really looked like you were able to put it in cruise control throughout that one. Was that the case? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I've done probably 100 or 200 laps here, and uh, I really feel at home when I get on the track. And then you put me behind the truck like Ben's. Uh, we're going to do some pass laps and get out front quick. And I always love hole shots. And see Ben's truck, you know, pull a hole shot. Uh, the truck is there, but believe it or not, like two days ago, we found the truck leaking gas on the floor in my garage. Uh, we kind of could have came out here and lost a fuel line and uh, just lost that race. But we found it. Uh, it's all done at the shop. You got to finish the race and then uh, do the laps and hopefully get out front. Well, kudos to you and your team for getting that truck fixed and put back together for this race. In addition to your team, who's helping you out? Yeah, Conrad's Auto Salvage for the tires and helping us out all year. Uh, Rally Aid for uh, all the help all around. And uh, my friends, my family, my tranny guy. Uh, just everybody. It's huge. Seven wins in a row. Uh, I can't ask for anything more. Congratulations, Dan Boshaw. He's your winner here in Conrad's Auto Salvage Formula 4x4. Guys, thank you so much. Face sets me. You know, we haven't seen you yet this year with Championship Off-Road. You come out here to a place where you've had countless podiums, so many world championships. So, how good does this one feel? I think I had a really good race today. I've got to thank uh, Eddie Quaid for spotting for me. And Jeff Kincaid did some work on my shocks for me, and uh, thank Double D Service for sponsoring our class. You are also our flagman here with Championship Off-Road, so we love seeing you out here on track. Who would you like to thank for this one? Yeah, I just want to th thank uh, Eddie Quaid for spotting for me, and uh, Jeff Kincaid for helping me out with my shocks, and Double D Service for sponsoring our class. Our third place finisher, congratulations. Ron Cosiza, our second place finisher. Ron, this track, of course, so much faster than the other tracks we've been to this year. It requires a totally different driving style. So tell me how much of an adaption is it for a driver to change gears and to be able to maneuver a track like Crandon? Uh, it's really not too much of an adaption. But just gotta you know, hit the corners hard and go as fast as you can here. Who would you like to thank for this one? I'd like to thank all the fans for coming out, Champ Off-Road for hosting the event, Granite Off-Road, uh, Double D Services, and Crazy Car Motorsports. This is our second place finisher here. And our winner, Dale Chestnut. Back in action here. It's so good to see you back here in this division. Give me a reaction to that race. How was it from your perspective? Well, it was great to be back in the truck again. Nick Bing did a great job for me when I wasn't in there. But I had to come back, and this is a track I love to race. It's fast. You got to drive hard. You got to hit your marks, and uh, I was able to do that. And I had some really tough competition coming behind me, so I knew I had to just keep going. My spotter got me calm, kept me calm, and uh, we got back up here. Who would you like to thank for the win? I'd like to thank Off Road Fraternity, ATD Transmissions, JP at BP Fuels, um, Brian for spotting for me, uh, Double D Services, um, all the other racers, Crandon and Core, and. You know, nobody knew if we were going to make it or not to this race, and it's great to be here. And of course, all the fans, my crew, and everybody else that helps. Big meeting to Lynn. Congratulations, Dale Chestnut. Greg Stingle, we've seen him up on top here quite a few times at Grandin. Kyle Patton odds in the 174. Colin Schultz in the 177. Tyson Marquardt in the 122. Green flag has flown as they come down into turn one. Billy Booth is in the 151. 
Yeah, a lot of cars. 33 to be exact. Look at contact. Already, I told you, they're going to be trading paint. Coming into Forest County. Potawatomi turn number one. Who's going to have the whole shot? It looks like it's going to be Schultz in that 177 alongside Marquardt. Marquardt comes into this race second in points, and they're side by side as they head toward turn number two. Wow, look at the water we put down on the track here this morning. Really, really greasy. They're feathering, dipping in and out of that throttle. Remember, anytime you put 33 cars on a track, you really have to have a lot of moisture shade. But maybe they put a little too much. Yeah, not not just a ton of cars, but open wheel cars. So the, the mayhem factor is turned up that much higher than these are open wheel cars. As our field filters down into the gravel pit for the first time, looks like 177 Colin Schultz out of Pina is your leader. Yeah, Schultz trying to hold on to that lead here as they come over the player's razor jump, and they're trying to dodge all that water to that inside. So if you look by that K-rail right there by our champ off-road banners, you want to try to keep that right front down there to get turned. Yeah, and you see Marquardt really holding that inside line, trying to find that one car width of dry track down at the very bottom. Yeah, that's what they're doing right here, coming through Argonne Turn. It was so cool to hear you say it earlier. It's all because of the fire department. That's when they work on this track. So it's so cool. Everything, a little bit, and every feature of this track, everything means something to someone here in this small, small town that grows to be huge on weekends like this. The 51st anniversary here in Brandon, Wisconsin. Coming back into the rear part of the track here by the starting line and that's such a cool drone shot and yeah, good look at billy booth who entered this round as your points leader with a narrow lead over tyson marquardt right now marquardt second booth in third so points championship implications happening right now as they battle for second place every point counts especially we're past the halfway point here in champ off road in 2020 one of the fastest turns in off-road racing. Coming to the bottom, looks like Booth. Coming over the barn turn. And man, these cars, not a lot of travel on these things. Yeah, you're, you're talking about Volkswagen, you know, old old Volkswagen Beetle torsion beam front rear suspension. So, like you said, very limited suspension travel. And really using every inch of the travel that they do have here on some of these bigger jumps here at Grand International Off-Road Raceway. I always call them an overpowered go-kart because they really do fly. You might watch your Pro 2, Pro 4 trucks and go, wow, that is no comparison. Well, sit yourself in one of these cars and you put it that low to the ground, you're scooting around this track here in Grand, and here comes Booth. Booth looked to the inside of Marquardt as they went down into Calamity Corner. Oh, Marquardt is going to go. go around. Our car goes around just like we were saying. It's a little slippery. You get that left rear out in that slime and it'll turn you around. Let's look at the nerf bars on Billy Booth already just carrying that mud. Yeah, something to keep an eye on with that is that has extra weight. Obviously, you're in off-road racing. Weight means that you're going to be going a little bit slower. So now that he's out in clean air, maybe not so much an issue. But uh, we're going to take a look back here at Marquardt. Yeah, Mark Hardy just came in all hot and heavy, had nowhere to go, trying to rotate. It was almost too late. He was already on exit. That's going to cost him. Yeah, he had to wait a long time to pull back into traffic, so that really benefits Billy Booth, who's running in second now, trying to chase down Colin Schultz. That's going to let Booth open up his points lead a little bit more here around number seven. Schultz now with the lead over Billy Booth in the 151. Good look at Booth coming in Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one once again. There's the 129. That's Schultz as well. Yeah, both Schultz brothers at the top three right now with Booth sandwiched between the two of them. Three and a half seconds back from the 177. The track's really going to take some time to work in. It's not going to go away anytime soon, all that standing water, because they're just not running through it. it Mother Nature has to do its course and try to maybe get some breeze or winds coming through this track here to dry it up quicker. When we talk about limited horsepower, then you add that mud, it really drains these cars down. Yeah, so much of the, the racing here at 1600 Light Buggy and some of our other sports classes too, it's all about momentum. And, you know, you saw Marquardt trying to carry as much momentum as he could, trying to hold that dry line and it ended up costing him, but momentum really the name of the game here at Light Buggy. 
Yeah, definitely the name of the game. You really, really have to carry that speed. They really do. It's huge. It tracks 1.7 miles. Almost a two-mile car, so you can't just put one or two corners together. You just gotta flow this track. You have to study it. You have to just be on top of your game when you come here, and you gotta go where your car likes to go. I don't care if you have two cars that are similar. You still have to drive these machines, and it's not no easy task. And you mentioned before, limited suspension travel, not only that, you're sitting down low and there's no power steering in these cars, so you called it an oversized go-kart, that's really what it feels like, it's really taxing on your body, you really have to stay drive with these cars. And then especially for eight laps, you look on our board, two out of eight, two out of eight laps are complete, and at the same time, like you said, you really have to be in shape, you can't just go out there and be like, I'll do that, it's like anything, you have to be ready for the war. Yeah, no doubt about it right now, Colin Schultz definitely in good enough shape to be leading this race and stretching his lead now over Booth and his brother Connor Schultz and the rest of the field. Yeah, Colin's out to a good lead, that 177 getting a little squirrely. Going by the sweets once again. We see a little dust there, but he's working in that inside. Going as hard as he can, then you've got to try to tiptoe through this corner. Gravel pit, they call it. You will dig up, dig up a few rocks throughout this weekend. I guarantee you that. Yeah, it looks like most of these drivers favoring the inside line in the gravel pit. But as you said, the outside line will work in as the uh, racing as we advance through our schedule here in round number seven. Another good look at Schultz there, the Flying Dutchman off-road car, 177. The old Mike Van will never as a nod to the guy who built the car. Yeah, it's always fun to watch Mikey work on those cars, fabricate the cars, learn all the geometry, and then go out and win in one of his own cars. And he's been lucky enough to move up the ranks and win in a bunch of different vehicles throughout his career, and we cool to see him come back someday. It's like trouble there for the 170 of Hunter Tinglia because the roof actually came on last and opened up, so he had to pull off and get that relatch. Oh, tough, tough break for Tinglia. He had to come in, get it relatched. Now he's back on the track, but losing a lot of ground on that man right there. Hunter Schultz. That 177 coming through again for his county Potawatomi turn number one. And look at that drone shot. Just riding alongside with these drivers. So cool. He actually said he could land on one of these cars if he needed to. That really gives you a great sense of the speed that these, these cars have as they come into turn one. As we look along now with Connor Schultz of that 129, he's running in third. The uh, cream has risen to the top here a little bit, Brent, as our top three have pretty much gapped out over the rest of the field and kind of separated themselves from one another as well. Yeah, definitely. And then you see Boots, he's running the second spot. He's very, very quick this year in 2020. Actually doing double duty running the single buggy class as well. So just keep stepping up the ladder. Him and his father, they do a great job. We talked with him at ERX the first, what, rounds one and two. And they're in their hands on, ripping the carburetors bar, rejetting them. They want to win. And to win, you really have to put that effort into it. All right, we've reached our halfway point here in the 1600 light buggy race. It's going to be Schultz, the 177, Colin Schultz, leading at the halfway point over points leader Billy Booth and his twin brother, Colin Schultz, that's Connor's twin brother. And Stingle, great charge there, the uh, closing uh -oh. lap of the first half already. <laughs> I mean, when you... <laughs> Think back over the uh, the past, you know, 15 years of light buggy racing here at Grand, and you can't tell that story without talking about Greg Stingle being absolutely unstoppable at times. And he's found his way to the front here, and he's going to have a clean shot at the uh, top three here. Yeah, definitely, he is um, one of the men to beat here this weekend. But right now, we're going to go down to our third member of our team, Haley Shanley. What do you have for us, Haley? Thanks, guys. Tyson, Mark Ward. This is a matchup to watch this season. This points battle between himself and Billy Booth, one point just separates them. Unfortunately, Tyson, he got us. He got, he got turned around there in the gravel pit area, so he has some work to do. But while they're not duking it out on track right now, they sure are in that points championship. I caught up with Tyson, Mark Ward earlier, and I said, how is that dynamic between yourself and Billy Booth? Is it pretty heated or all in good friend, fun, friendly competition? He said it's all in good fun, friendly competition. So they're always going to race each other clean and as we know as race fans that that always puts on one great show that's so that's something you can always expect from them too is good clean racing 
Thank you very much, Haley. And that's what's so cool. You know, I don't care if it's your twin brother. I don't care if it's your cousin. I mean, you're out. When the gloves go on, the helmet goes on, you want to win. You could be teammates, but you're out there to do your job. And when we take the helmets off and take the gloves off at the end of the day, we could be best friends. But I believe when you're out the track, hey, it's anybody's game, and you got to go for it. Yeah, something that's always stood out to me about especially Light Buggy is that it's almost like a club or like like one big family. Sure, you've got your rivalries, and at times, you know, there's, there's squabbles and fights, but, you know, that at the end of the day, it is a club to an extent, and, and you'll see guys borrowing parts from their, you know, closest competitors from their rivals, and anything to keep the show going is... You see, we're going to be doing a Delaware restart here in Light Buggy. Yeah, they leave the leader out front by himself, so he earned that spot the first half of this race. So that, I, I like this new restart. This is what you need to see, something to change up some things and some strategies. And, I mean, your leader, you're looking at Schultz. He, he's got an opportunity to take off whenever he wants. But, hey, if you're running third, you got another shot. You're looking right at that leader now. Before we did single file restart, so you had that one guy in between. Now, hey, it's all about the whole shot on this start. Yeah, and you mentioned guys maybe with a new outlook on this race. I'm looking at row number three there. I saw that 122 of Marquardt. He's now sitting just two rows back of our leader, so definitely should factor into the second half of this race as well. And like we were saying earlier, you also can't cut out Greg Stingle. Yeah, you can't cut out Greg Single at all. And you look down, like you said, Marquardt, Hawkers, Lemke, Springstrow. He, he showed a lot of glove space last year. He really put a lot of wins together. He had a lot of speed in that 117 and roll off, as well as Janice down to Delorey in the 199. Pete and the guys, they know how to win in this class. So we see 33 buggies, and at any given time, you could have 20 buggies. Any guy can win at any time. So. Keep your eye on our race leader right now. Four out of eight laps are in the book here at the halfway point. So four laps to go here in 1600 light buggy, Shane. Yeah, Colin Schultz is going to be in control of the field. Wow. We're back to green flag racing. And it looked like kind of a sloppy restart by some of this field, Brent. Yeah, there was a sloppy restart. I don't know if they got caught taking a nap on the restart, but the track is really, really mucky on that inside so if you want to see you need to be up top two here schultz bulls schultz stingle your top four going to the gravel pit as they come through the gravel pit here after this restart look who's coming up through the field here the 129 of schultz the other schultz brother connor schultz now up into second place so it's the schultz brothers running first and second here at Crandon. Jones running down on that bottom side, nice dry track, kicking actually up some dust already. Everyone playing single file, going underneath this finish line here in Grandin. Going through Argonne turn, such a deceiving turn. Here comes Stingle, Stingle starting to work up towards our top three, here we go. That's yeah, Stingle going to work on Connor Schultz there. Stingle's been racing for so long that he, he has more years racing than how old the Schultz brothers are as we see. We've got some mayhem further back in the field. Tom break for Pete DeLore. Looks like Schultz was involved. Pat Knock, Dockno, and I believe the 104 of... That would be Janice also involved. Yeah, it looks like Janice's day is tied up. Looks like a parking lot. Look at this. Stingle now going, making contact. Robin Tires coming back towards Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one. Looks like Stingle's going to make the pass on Schultz. Yeah, Stingle up into second place now as they come through turn number one. Whoa! You see how squirrely he got coming by the K-Rail, Schultz? He almost kissed that K-Rail. That could have been horrible. Yeah, barely made the save there. That's a high-speed section, and you get these cars a little bit upset. Like you said, there's not a lot of suspension travel, so really tough to gather back up. Especially you're flat out in turn number one. I don't care if this is 1600 light buggy. You are sailing through that first turn and you really have to pay attention because you get a little squirrely, you're going to end up hitting something you don't want to. As here comes Booth in that 151. Remember, you see the red plate on there with the white numbers. That means he is our past points champion. Yeah, trying to double up here and make it two light buggy points championships in a row. As we're going to take another look at what happened between 
Delorey and all the rest of those guys. Looks like Marquardt and Springstro got involved a little bit. Springstro stalled it. That's what happened. Then Patnod gets into. I'm not sure who that was. Looks like maybe Shillman. Yeah, Delorey got some help in the 199 as well. He parked it right underneath the flag banner. So yeah, Springstro looked like he just lost fire in that car, and nobody had really anywhere to go to get around him. Is you know seven, eight cars trying to go through two lanes of traffic. Just not enough room, so tough break for some of those guys. There's Janice, tough break for him too as well. That 104 park there, look at the mud. Look at the, just how thick it is on the hood of those cars. And we talked about weight, especially, you're not running that much horsepower. So you put about 50, 60, maybe even 100 pounds of mud on these cars, you're really gonna feel it. And then it bottoms out those shocks that much quicker. So you see our field getting sorted back out. And like we said, Stinkle on the charge there in that first half. Now we get another full course caution. Stinkle square, it's looking squarely at the back bumper of Colin Schultz now. Yeah, it's a, it's a whole new ball game once again here. So you see our pace truck gathering the field up. We're gonna go back to that Delaware restart once again. 177 of Schultz looks to be the guy to beat, but anytime you show that 172 a little bit of breathing room, that's when you start to worry. Oh, look what we got here. I don't. That could be the cause of our like, yellow flag here, Shane. It, everyone wants to be in Crane, Wisconsin this afternoon. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't see that he's properly credentialed, so we're gonna have to escort him off the racetrack here. Yeah, I'll give him a little tear off. He's ready. Brent, I just found out that when we go back to green flag racing, it's going to be green, white, checker. So just a couple laps here to go in light buggy. Let's see if Stingle can go to work on Schultz right away. 33 plus cars started this field here at 1600 light buggy. We should be going back to green flag this time by. So green, white, checker, like Shane said. Pay attention, this top five is gonna get very, very tricky. Who is gonna pull off this win here on day number one, the 51st anniversary here in Cranon, Wisconsin? We'll see if our pace truck pulls off to the side of your camera. Schultz, Booth, Stingle, Schultz, Marcourt, Hawkers, Lemke, your top seven. There we go, Shane. Yep, pace truck pulling off, so Colin Schultz at 177, the Flying Dutchman car, takes control of the field here. He decides when this race restarts between the uh, the cone zone that we call it. Wow, looked like we got a little jump on the restart. Booth, it seemed like he had nowhere to go, so it's gonna be Schultz. Both of them up front now. Yeah, the two Schultz brothers, they're twins. But, hey, don't get me wrong, these guys are going to duke it out just as hard as they would battle anybody else. So it's Schultz, Schultz, Stingle, your top three as they come down into the gravel pit. Yeah, all of them going to that inside once again. Look at this. Yeah, just looking for a little bit of dry track down there on the inside. If you get off that race line just a little bit, it's slick down there in the gravel pit. We saw Marquardt go around in the finish line corner as well. Schultz going to run that bottom side by the K-Rail once again, remember. Green, white, checker, there's a green flag. So next time by, we'll be coming to the white flag. Track starting to dry out nicely, coming through this little chicane through Argon Turn. There is your battle for the race lead. It's still the Schultz brothers running first and second. I kind of thought we'd see a little bit more speed on a stingle on that last restart, but it looks like he's falling back just a little bit. Well, Shane, it was really, really muddy in front of the crowd. And when they did that restart, you see that there was only like one preferred line on that outside. It gave Schultz the advantage. And here comes Stingle now. Stingle starting to button up in her top two. See if Stingle still has enough in the tank. He normally usually does. Because here he comes. I'm keeping an eye on Billy Booth there, that 151. He's your defending points champion, current points leader. He's in the mix as well. He's in fourth, but this is some good tight racing as they come through turn one. Stingle was looking to the inside of Schultz, but Schultz able to slam the door. 
Yeah, Schultz is like, not right now, single, and Greg really needs to put his head down once again and try to make that pass. Time is starting to run out. Remember, this time by, we should be coming to the white flag, the 177 of Schultz. Going through the gravel pit turn, starting to really get dusty through there, and you can just see the horsepower when they're coming out of there, when they're shifting. You really have to hit your marks because you can't scrub any speed. We talk about momentum. You really have to have it here in the 1600 light buggy, and there it is. There's our flag man going underneath the McCoy finish line, and Schultz still holding on to that spot. In our running order, it's not Schultz, it's Stingle actually now in second. So remember, we'll see, does he have enough time? Schultz brothers running one and two, Stingle is there, Marquardt is there as well. So see our top four head down that long back stretch. That shot doesn't do it justice, Brett, but that's a very steep drop off down into that hole and then a steep hill pulling back up out of it. So as they enter this, Tight, tight left-hand corner back by the start line. We talked about Mikey Vanden running those cars, actually building those cars. The top three cars are actually flying Dutchman cars. So that says a lot for the flying Dutchman off-road racing team. Mikey's been around a long, long time. One heck of a fabricator and a good dude himself. Loves this sport to death and just keeps putting people in winter circles year after year. One final time through turn number two. It's still Colin Schultz running out front that 177. Opened up a little bit of a lead over that last lap on the rest of this field. So he is cruising right now. Schultz coming in the gravel pit one more time, trying to keep it tight to the bottom. Still with a comfortable lead. He's gonna bring it off to Polaris Razor Jump one more time, coming into the finish line turn. Tiptoeing his way through, should be staring at the checkered flag this time by, and there it is, with the win. Schultz in the 177 will take the top spot this afternoon. And his twin brother Connor in the 129 will finish second. And Greg Stingel at another, uh, another notch on his checklist there. Another podium finish here at Crandon. He's been doing this a long, long time. Hey. Thank you so much, Greg Stingle. Greg, no matter where you start, you know, you are a guy that can never be ruled out. So, uh, so tell me about this one. How much does familiarity come into play on a track like this for you where you've historically done so well? Well, this track doesn't change a lot. It's more about the watering and how it's groomed. And my two spotters were telling me, you know, you got to watch it here. There's places that are dry. And they said, when you come around turn one, it just, it's only going to go to Greece, and then when you get up by the skyboxes, it gets better. And you know they tell you pretty much on each corner. Turn one was dry; it was perfect, but everybody had such a run, and all of a sudden everybody hit mud, and everybody's going sideways and stuff. We were just basically luckily enough to come through it unscathed. I think we came out like fifth after the first couple laps, and we just kept working traffic. And after the restart, I got up the second for a little bit, and then one of the boys got back past me to finish third. I mean. It's a great day when you can do that here with that many cars in this kind of competition. So, um, hey, and we're here. It's Labor Day weekend again. This is like my 27th year, so it's great to be back and great for everybody to show up. Um, I got a sponsor. Thank my sponsors, ANS Board Walls, Brownie Concrete Pumping, Kurt Services, JJ Maloney's, Ben Small Engines, Lakeshore Cleaners, and anybody else I might have forgot. Um, contingency sponsors, more. Um, champion off road for putting this together and sticking with it and not giving in. Um, and the guys from Crandon, man, they had to do a lot of extra stuff just to make this happen. And I hope everybody enjoys it. I know there's a lot of people here for the weekend. And thanks. Congratulations, Greg Single, our third place finisher. And in second, Connor Schultz. Connor, there were, like he was talking about, there were so many position changes out there amongst the top three. Talk to me about the varying conditions out there. You know, we have the slick, we have dry sections. Just how much does this track demand you to be on your toes? Oh, definitely. Today we had a little bit of everything. Dry, wet, and slimy. And track prep was not really optimal. I mean, you had to find the dry lines to be fast, and most of them were way inside or way outside. 
hopefully was able to find him and follow my brother for most of the race. And it was also really dusty. Turn one might not look that dusty, but I could not see anything. You could barely see the wall next to you. Such a challenge, but you made it happen for a podium finish. Who would you like to thank? Well, I'd like to thank my whole family for coming out, Flying Dutchman Off-Road, my dad for spotting, and the contingency sponsors, CORE, for putting on this event. We wouldn't be here without them. And yeah, thanks to everyone. Connor Schultz, our second place finisher here in 1600 Live Buggy. And our winner, Colin Schultz. Colin, I think this is the first time in, in championship off-road history we've had twins finish one and two. So talk to me about that dynamic with you and your brother. How are you two pushing each other and making each other better on track? Everything we do is as a team. When I was a kid growing up, dreaming up, my, my dream was always just to pull a whole shot here and win the race. This is the first time I've won here and I got my goal accomplished. Well, a strong start to the weekend for you. Who would you like to thank? I'd like to thank my whole family for coming out. As you can see, they're all hanging out here. Uh, my dad for helping me tune my engine to get it faster. Flying Dutchman Off-Road for building awesome cars and a great hood for me. Um, Amsoil for the great products. Fresh oil change, kept my engine cool the whole race. Chad Rayford for helping us out, letting us pit with him. And that's it. Congratulations, Colin Schultz, your winner here. Van and Google Jesse, one, two, and three. This is your all-star performance, 1600 light buggy. Back to you guys. ERX gave us some info about these cars, and you really enjoyed this class, didn't you? Yeah, it was a lot of fun battling our early on in this class. They're really changing up the track for it this year. We've had a bunch of different track layouts here at Cranon. They're doing the entire front short course this year, is what I heard. If you see the little cutoff jump by over by the skyboxes and the flags, that's where we used to cut off, and you jump down and turn hard, re turn hard left into the turn. So it's going to be a big change. I'm, my guess is they'll probably be able to hold it wide open around the entire track. It's going to be a lot about who's the least scared and who's got the best line choice. Yeah, absolutely. Flat out racing for these kids in the short course kart field. And just like Light Buggy one race ago, this is a, a momentum class that we, what we like to call it. So as Carter said, choosing your lines and, and hitting your marks, being very precise is really what it takes to win here in this class. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Carter. It's so cool to have you back, like we said. And you really have to have the momentum. You don't have that high horsepower like a Pro Light or a Pro 2. You, you're limited on power. You're limited on suspension. But these carts, they get up and go. And then we look at what's your next step after these short course carts. Carter, you talk about mod cart. I mean, a little bit faster. They're running a 400 four-wheeler engine in it so I mean you gotta think I mean the stepping stones are here in this class but is that something you would like to do yeah but they're off right now as they head down into turn two looks like Kraus got a great start got up and around the cost he's side by side with race Visser as they go through turn two and Kraus is on the inside this is gonna be the first time they hit the skybox jump in a race they're gonna get a lot of speed coming down this hill. Let's see who can hold the most of it going into the gravel pit. Long, long straightaway going into the gravel pit this time by. A little bit of moisture, here we go. We already got three wide going down into the gravel pit. Yeah, Visser and Banzile doing a little bumping and banging there. We've seen those guys mix it up just a couple of weeks ago back in ERX, they had some contact as well. So maybe a rivalry starting to develop here in short course carts. Meanwhile, the 33 of Tristan Hinton makes his way into second place with Van Zyl hot on his heels going into Calamity Corner. Yeah, Van Zyl, he did show a lot of speed at ERX Motor Park, and here comes Van Zyl to the inside. Gonna try to work his way up into second. Yeah, Van Zyl running a little bit cleaner line there down on the inside. Looks like Hinton got a little bit crossed up, had to overcorrect a little bit. So again, Moisture on top of the track playing a factor as well. Yeah, look at Van Zyl. He's trying to keep it all locked in step on this track. Little slippery coming back in front of the crowd one more time. So the track a little bit longer this year for the 51st anniversary here in Crandon. Looks like the 80 of Ray's Vister has unfortunately fallen quite a few positions. I wonder if he had some sort of issue. Yeah, he could have had some kind of issue, Carter. I don't know what we'll the babysit and watch as they come over that little roller jump heading towards the gravel pit again. Yeah, definitely really, really wet. Yeah, let's see if Hinton or Van Zyl can get a run as they head down into the Blair's Razor gravel pit. I'd watch for Van Zyl to try to hold more momentum up on the top side and get around him. Not going to be the case as they both 
overcorrect a little bit. Yeah, both of those cars trying to run down near the bottom of the track. And it's super slick down there right now as our uh, water truck crew definitely, uh, Got I don't want to say overdid it. Coming but... on the inside of one of the Lawrences, making the move and we'll try to go after the other. Look at Krause out there in that Icer in truck, the number 24, just hanging it out. He's your leader. Yeah, Krause doing a fine job up front. Trying to run away from this field early on. Remember, we have mandatory competition caution in a lot of these races here this weekend, but in the short course carts, we do not have that mandatory competition caution. So pay attention to your top three. That's the race on the track right now. It's Kraus hitting Vance out of your top three. Yeah, well, starting to heat Andy up a Johnson little bit. Johnson gets into the fourth spot. Let's see if he can reel in your top three. He's been very strong this season. Yeah, Johnson came into this race leading in points over Abel Lawrence and Carter Nordrum. I expected to see Nordrum running a little bit farther up front as well, but he's all the way back in 10th. Yeah, Nordrum, he's way back there. So he'll have a lot of work left to do. Remember, only six laps in this short course kart race. A good view from our drone once again. Coming to the gravel pit, you can just see the elevation, the difference from the bottom to the top. Later on this afternoon, you're gonna see a lot of cars making two, three lines through there. Again, Nanza both of our- more uh, momentum than Hinden coming through the gravel pit. He's gonna get the run up on the inside. Look at Van Zyl. he's gonna work his way up. Oh, oh little, he shuts the door. Little fender to fender contact between Hinton and Van Zyl. Hinton is not ready to give up that second place spot. Gonna go bit. a little bit wide here. Oh, he over rotates Carter. Let's see more contact. Van Zyl Hinton gets bumps bounced him out, out of the, the soft stuff. I mean, it wouldn't cause it, call it anybody's fault. He's got a little squirrely, made a little contact, rubbing his racing. I think he might not have been very happy with that block. Meanwhile, Andy Johnson got around him as well. Andy Johnson really in the leaders in very quickly, moving into the third spot. Johnson now in that race driven players KTM ride. There he is on camera coming in front of the fans here in Crandon. There's the 13. Track is really longer this year, Carter, we talked about. So is that harder on these equipment? Like, is it harder on these trucks? I mean, you're not climbing as big as incline as you would as you looked on that infield up and over. Yeah, honestly, long track, they're at a high speed for a long time, but they're not on and off the gas or going up a steep hill, so it's not too hard on the equipment, but it is it is very hard to keep the momentum up. Here comes Johnson, Shane, again to the inside, coming in the gravel pit. Yeah, Johnson trying to chase down Van Zyl. You can see that the uh, the track, the race line is wearing in just a little bit better as they went through the gravel pit that time. None of the top three trucks really got too crossed up, but this uh, this track surface right now is, is really slick, almost bordering on greasy on top. So something that these drivers are fighting, and you can see the amount of mud getting thrown up even by these low horsepower carts. A lot of dirt hanging onto these cars. Yeah, for sure, a lot of weight. And here comes Johnson. Johnson trying to reel in Van Zyl. Look at Van Zyl. Van Zyl over the, all over the back of Kraus. Looks Same like Van Zyl lifting for that corner just a little bit, whereas Kraus looks like not to be. Yeah, he's trying to square away that turn, Carter. He's trying to get to the inside and look at Johnson, all squirrely. So definitely the moisture is playing a big, big factor here in this short course carts race. And there's that bump that's been forming right by the fourth or fifth tractor tire exiting that turn. Watch for that, the short track, that bump has really been forming solid. Yeah, we talk about how here at Crandon, just like all of our tracks here on the Champ Off Road Series, the, the track conditions change so much lap over lap. That's something else that these drivers have to keep an eye on and listen to their spotters and, and just understand that the track is changing and be able to anticipate those changes. Yeah, we talk about this mud and all that, what it plays as a factor in this race. You really, you have to have tear offs on these shields of these helmets you really have to pay attention you don't want to pull too many off too quick then later in the race if you look at johnson he really can't get to the back door of anzile because you're going to go through tear offs left and right looks like kraus has got something figured out for the straightaways they've got a little more speed in that truck but he scrubs off some speed going into the corners uh, that might have done it right there vanzile goes to the inside Van Zyl taking the spot away from the 24X of Kraus. Kraus, he's gonna go down two spots. Here comes Johnson. Just in time to take the white flag. The top two get in the front. Wow, is there enough time for Johnson, Shane? This kid has been coming a long, long way in this sport. He's just been progressing year after year. His father, Casey, 
My brother and I had a chance to talk with him at the parade, and he just said we keep throwing stuff at it. We just want to make these cars as fast as possible. And his boys, they're really becoming good drivers. Yeah, and Andy Johnson, like we said, he's also your points leader and trying to extend his points lead over Ava Lawrence and Carter Nordrum and the rest of this field. As we look at Van Zyl, it's about five truck lengths right now, but here comes Johnson. Look at the run on the inside as they go down the hill. Johnson looking to the inside, Carter. What would you do in this in this predicament? What would you want to do? Where, where are you going to go, inside oh, this, or outside? This turn, you're going inside and dooring them. Yeah, look at, can he get to the bedside? I don't know. This work gets tricky on exit. We'll see. Johnson's going to have one more shot as they head up and over the Polaris Razor, jumping down into Calamity Corner. Watch for him to dive hard inside in this last turn. I don't know if Van Zyl's going to let him. I don't know if Van Zyl's playing the protective line on that inside. We'll see. If Van Zyl opens the door, here comes Johnson. Pay attention. Van Zyl doing a great job playing defense. Checkered flag is out. Van Zyl holds on for the win at his hometown track here at Granite International Off-Road Raceway. And Johnson will extend his points lead there with that second place finish. A and good. Krause had a great run as well. Led the majority of that race. Just one mistake though, Brent, and that was all the difference. Yeah, definitely. It doesn't take much and one mistake can cost you a lot of points in the end and picking up some valuable points. Johnson there in the number 13 coming in second, but Van Zyl, big win on the weekend. I believe that it was Krause's first career podium. He led a lot of the race. He was making mistakes though. Eventually one of them was gonna catch up with him. We sure do. It is all smiles down here at the podium. David Krause, come on up to the mic for me. Your first career podium, congratulations. What are the emotions right now? I'm kind of sad. Why is that? Why are you sad? Just happy. Yeah, happy tears are flowing here. What made the difference for you out there? How fast is this car feeling? Who would, you, who would you like to thank for this one? I'd like to thank my Uncle Paul, my family, my grandma and grandpa, and the whole race team. Man, such an emotional podium for this guy. This is David Krause. Congratulations. And Andy Johnson in second. Man, one of our hard chargers here today. Extending your points lead. You were giving it all you had out there. Perhaps maybe just one more lap and you could have made it happen. Talk me through that last lap and some of the things you were trying out there. Um, first lap, uh, I drove into the wall because I, I just couldn't see. Um, so then I turn around and then I'm back with the group. Um, coming into the second lap here, almost the same thing happened. Though my visor was loaded with mud, so I ripped off the tear off. Then I thought to myself, because I had 10 of them on there, though I ripped all 10 off, so the whole race it was back and forth with wiping my eyes out. Who would you like to thank for this one? Uh, big shout out to Race Driven, Transmissions and More, Cooper's Office Equipment, and family, friends for coming out. That's it. Congratulations, Andy Johnson, our second place finisher. And our winner, Hunter Van Zyl. Man, putting on a show throughout that entire race, it seemed. Congrats on the win. You know, to win at Cranon, that is no easy feat. But walk me through that one. You were on the defensive trying to hold off Andy Johnson. You must have known he was there. Talk to me about having to be on the defensive there. Yeah, I had no idea what to do. Um, my whole tear visor was just full of mud, and I ripped off all my tear offs. Troy Adams coaching was there to help me get through the whole tear track. What is it like to win at Crandon? I would assume that that has to be a big confidence booster heading into tomorrow. Yeah, it is. I can't wait for tomorrow, too. Who would you like to thank? Um, I'd like to thank Troy Adams, coaching, uh, Doug Hayes, Kane Kalinske, um, Horse County Car Walk Me, Yeti's Ice Cream, All the Way Outdoors, and Clarence Loggy, and all my animals. Taking home that gold medal. This is Hunter Van Zyl. Congratulations to Hunter, Andy Johnson, and David Krause here for the Steel Brain Service Short Horse Cart. All right, welcome back. With us up here in the booth, Brent Smith, and I'm Shane Stepsky.
Hey, the Midtown Custom Road Siding Mod Cars, they're already out there on the track. Looks like eight drivers made the call for this one. Out there we've got Troy Johnson, Chase Moeller, excuse me, Chase Miller, Porter Iglesi, Antonio Iglesi, Michael Funk, Zach Rahanowitz, Easton Sleeper, and Sam Marquardt. Marquardt is your points leader. We look at him side by side with Vandeport, but it's easy E, Easton Sleeper out front early on. Yeah, Sleeper, he never wasted any time. He's out front early. Had a big win at ERX Motor Park a couple weeks back. Here comes Johnson. We talked about Andy Johnson. He is now going back to the pits, but his brother Troy, that race-driven player's KTM ride, trying to work his way up to the front early. Yeah, looks like Marquardt now up into second. Vandevoort after his teammate Kraus just finished on the podium trying to make it two for two there for the Platt race chassis kart division that they have. They got a whole bunch of cars under that on and Kenny and Paul and all those guys working hard all weekend, all season. There is Vandevoort. They head back down the flyway into the Polaris Razor gravel pit. Taking a look there at Marquardt trying to chase down Sleeper. Marquardt is your points leader, has won all but one race, and the only guy that's defeated him so far is Sleeper. So good early showing here by Sleeper, and Marquardt's got some work to do. Yeah, Marquardt, it's not likely to see him towards the back, but he had to work his way up through early parts of this race. We'll see if he can get back up to that top spot. There's the 211 of Troy Johnson working his way through going under what will be the finish line here this afternoon. Track looks a little bit better here in the mod car race, Shane. It looks like they really did put a lot of water down in between the two races, so we'll have to see. These tires are really starting to dig in. Nap on board as well, that Johnson ride. Yeah, a little bit drier track, but with such minimal track prep between those two races. Also a little bit rougher track, so something else to contend with besides the mud that's on top here for the water trucks. Yeah, the track surface is going to change really quickly now here in this mod card race. Yeah, it's going to definitely change as you look coming into the gravel pit. Sleeper really needs to get on the loud pedal because here comes Marquardt once again. Johnson still running third. Look at Marquardt. Marquardt going to go to the inside. Battle for the lead as they come into Calamity Corner, and Marquardt is going to slam the door on Sleeper. So Sam Marquardt from Lino will take over the race lead. A little bit of contact there, Brent. Yeah, Sleeper, I don't know, maybe got caught sleeping for a little bit. Open up the gap, open up that door. Oh, oh big contact. Trouble. That was Iglesi, the 201 Porter. Iglesi went around. Couldn't avoid running into the 296 of Vandevoort as taking a look back out front. Marquardt about two truck lengths now over Sleeper as they head toward turn number two. Marquardt laying down some fast laps now. He gets out that clean air. Don't hold nothing back from Easton Sleeper. Sleeper doing a fine job. He just needs to run his pace now. And you see Marquardt Pinter's pocket. He took over that lead. But you really just need to go, like I said. Run his pace, focus on your lines. Don't try to play follow the leader, but you, you gotta keep that pace. Yeah, Easton Sleeper has a, a ton of experience. Came up through the short course cart class, now into mod cart. He's turned a ton of laps here at Crandon, so, you know, it's, it's hard to rattle Sleeper, but I tell you what, Mark Mark, man on a mission this year. He's trying to make it six wins in seven races. Yeah, six wins in seven races. That is pretty much near perfect here at Champoff Road. As they come through the front straightaway by the big screens here this afternoon. Still more court sleeper. Johnson, your top three. And look at Zachary Rahanowitz at 231. Edwards out of collision. Sitting in the four spot. Don't count him out. He's been very, very quick as well, Shane. Yeah, Ranowitz has had some good showings here at Grandin in the past, too. So keep an eye on him. He's back in fourth right now, but Marquardt starting to stretch his lead now over Sleeper as they go once again towards the Polaris Razor jump. So cool to watch these mod car drivers progress. His drivers themselves really, they focus. The cars really get up and go. So you see him scissoring back and forth on that steering wheel. The HBI ride of Marquardt still holding on to that top spot. You can see the shadow of our drone just following Marquardt as we come to that mandatory competition caution. 
that time by the yellow and red flag display, and we are at the halfway point. Yeah, very fast first half, and oh no, Brent. Looks like Sleeper is parked right now down on the entry there of the finish line corner, Calamity Corner, as we'll call it all weekend. Yeah, Calamity yeah, Corner is really collected East and Sleeper, that 213, so definitely something catastrophic going wrong with that car. That boosts Johnson up into our second place spot. As we're going to go down trackside with Haley Shanley. What do you have for us, Haley? Thanks, guys. More on Easton Sleeper. A tough break for him, it appears, on track. We'll have more information on that later. But I was catching up with him yesterday. You know, he was able to dethrone Sam Marquardt in his win streak. Easton Sleeper with a win in the preceding round. I said, what's been the difference for you this year? And he said, you know, there's a familiar face to short course offer of the Midwest working with him this year. That is Luke Johnson. And I said, Easton, what exactly has he been coaching you the most on? And he said, the biggest thing that I have learned from Luke Johnson is to have the confidence out there. Obviously, the speed has been there for Easton Sleeper, but to really let it show and have confidence on track, that's been a game changer for him. Yeah, anytime you can have Luke Johnson helping you out, giving you some pointers. They've been around these tracks for a long, long time. And, hey, if you can put them underneath your pit and your camp, hey, more power to you. Everybody's looking for that edge, and Easton Sleeper, his edge is Luke Johnson. Yeah, and, and uh, Easton's dad, Todd, has, has been around this sport a long time. He's been helping out Zach Simic from time to time as well. Uh, a very good program that Todd Sleeper is putting together for Easton and, and really molding uh, a young driver into a, a very sportsmanship oriented young man. Yeah, Easton yeah. Easton is a, is a quality, quality driver here in our field as we're back to green flag racing. Yeah, you hit that nail right on the head, and he's putting him where he needs to be. So tomorrow's a new day for Easton Sleeper, but right now, Marquardt, he opens up that gap already over Johnson on this restart. So Johnson's really going to have to go to his pocketbook. He's going to have to figure it out, try to pull some tricks out of his sleeve as they go in, do that gravel pit turn. Johnson going a little bit wide. We'll see on exit if he can get a run. Here comes fourth and fifth. Yeah, Funk and Rahanowicz are going to go side-by-side side as they head for the Polaris Razor jump. Still side-by-side. Side. Rahanowicz is going to back off just a little bit. You don't want to get hung out to dry here in Calamity Corner. We've seen how wet it is down there. Troy Johnson trying to tiptoe his way on that nice, racy surface. You don't want to get out in that fluff like you said, Shane. It'll just dog all the horsepower. Speaking of horsepower, here comes Funk. Funk. Yep. Funk, and he's got his back bumper right full of the 296. That is Chase Miller. Johnson opening up the door, letting Funk by. We'll see. Good battle there. Michael Funk, we haven't talked about him running up front a whole lot this year. He's been on the podium a couple times, but he knows what it takes to win. He was actually last year's short course kart world champion, so he definitely knows what it takes to win here at Crandon. Yeah, he does. He knows where every rock's located. He's been around for a couple years. He's putting down some good laps today. Here comes Johnson. We'll see if the race-driven players, KTM Ryan, can work his way up back into that top two. Look at this pack of trucks as they go through the finish line corner. Michael Funk trying to run out on that cushion. Here comes Miller. Look at the run up the inside. Now he's going to be on the outside as they turn around what used to be Parsons Pond down there on the infield. Miller with a great run, and he's able to slam the door. Yeah, Miller closed that gap, and he took that spot away. Funk now going to move back to the third-place spot. Here comes Zachary Rahanowitz. Rahanowitz now will be in fourth. Johnson will go back to fifth. Here comes Rahanowitz. Then 231, the yellow and blue truck on the bottom of your screen. Trying to reel in these two. Now we see Funk in that 207 trying to set up outside of Miller. Looks like the, the track surface is really wearing in well now for these cars. They really are. The tires are really grooved the right way this afternoon. Here comes Zachary Rahanowitz again. Trying to make that pass stick and to try to go outside, inside. He's running on a nice line right there. We'll see if he can carry his speed through Argonne turn. One more time, Funk gets a little bit sideways. We'll see. That Edwards collision ride, remember, the blue and yellow ride right there. Zach, he's trying to work his way up still. 
Very good competition. Yeah, you see three really evenly matched drivers right now. I mean, Rohanowitz is running a great race right now. You can't short sell the uh, effort he's putting in here, but right now he's stuck in fourth. Yeah, definitely stuck in the fourth spot, about seven seconds behind Marquardt, our leader. Nowhere to be found on our screen. The dust already starting to come up here late in the race. And we talked about the ruts and the rocks in the gravel pit. They, they don't call it the gravel pit for any kind of reason other than, hey, these rocks, they can really get tore up. Yeah, and especially later when our, our bigger classes or our bigger truck classes are out here as we see the white flag. We'll see some of those bigger rocks actually get kicked up, thrown onto the track surface. That's something else you have to contend with here at Crandon, but one lap to go and nobody right now has anything for Sam Marquardt. Marquardt taking it through the barn turn. Oh, look at this. The 231, Zachary Rahanowitz putting it up on the driver door. I don't know if we have another look at that one. Back up front. Now, I just saw a little bit of smoke out of Marquardt's car. Did you see that, Brennan? I'm wondering if, I mean, it's only about half a lap to go here, but definitely something a little bit abyss there on that 290 HBI ride. Yeah, they're definitely going to cut in close here. They're really running these trucks wide open throughout these eight laps. Remember, the white flag was last time. We should be staring at the black and white checkered flag this time by. Marquardt wins his sixth race out of seven rounds here in 2020. What a season for Marquardt in that 290. Yeah, good run for Miller. Chase Miller from Seymour will be across the line in second. And Michael Funk, another strong run here, Almost finds his way to the podium. Seven second lead at the end there, winning this race. And we're going to take another look. Watch at the bottom of our camera there, Zachary Hanowitz. Wow, just got in there a little too hot. Yeah, trying to, trying to run that inside line. It's just a little bit slick. He went too far inside, found the slick stuff. The kid is definitely on the gas in 2020. And sometimes that happens, Shane. Yeah, it's such a competitive class. You have to drive aggressively all the time. And unfortunately, Rahanowitz pays the price there. And looking back at that race and looking ahead to this class tomorrow, I really pumped me out that Easton Sleeper dropped out because I feel like that would have been a battle right to the finish as well. Yeah, Easton, he really has his guts. Thanks, guys. Michael Funk, our 2019 short course kart world champion. You know, you're finding success early in the weekend. What is going through your mind right now? Um, well, I just, I had a bad start, and I just tried to catch up and catch up, and RJ was leading me through it all, and my dad, and yeah. Well, you held on for a podium position, regardless of some maybe mistakes early on, a very solid run for you. Now, can you compare and contrast what it takes to be successful on a track like Crandon in the short course cart versus the mod cart? Well, the short course cart, we took the shorter track, so it was a lot different going into the gravel pit and stuff. And yeah, it was a lot, it was really slick out there. And who would you like to thank? Um, d and Millwork, Corey Oil, Rhymer's Auto, um, Radix Auto Body, j m Yard Car, Corey Oil, my mom and dad. Um, yeah. Michael Fong taking home that bronze medal here. Congratulations. Chase Miller, our second place finisher. A job well done, your first podium of the season, one of our full-time runners here at the championship off-road. How's it feel? Feels pretty good. No, I couldn't be happier right now. Can you break down that race for me? Well, you know, I started off pretty good. I just kind of held it there and it worked out pretty good. Who would you like to thank? I'd like to thank my mom and dad, Katie and Jake, Legend Erection, Modern Built, Holmes, Iserin, TNE Tree Asport, uh, Over the Limit Outdoors, and anyone else I'm forgetting. P2 for Chase Miller, congratulations. <laughs> Sam Marquardt, our winner here. You started second off that whole shot, you had some work to do. Tell me about that pass you made for the lead early on. Well, Easton was running good, and he made a small mistake, and I capitalized with him on it, and I passed him, and nothing there. And it seemed that you really checked out there, almost finding cruise control. So, how is that? How much fun were you having out there, out front and clean air? It's a ton of fun. It's a ton of cool air officer, any of that kind of stuff. 
And uh, we were talking just a minute ago about how much this track is developing. It's changed quite a bit from our first race we saw on track today. Why is that? What were you seeing out there in the track? Uh, there's like a one line. There's like a dry spot, or if you got on the loose stuff, you just drag you right down and slow you right down. Who would you like to thank for the win? Well, I couldn't do this without Donna, Jennifer, uh, my mom, my dad, uh, Heck Electric, and my, uh, my sister, my aunt and uncle, my friends that came out here, Big EJ, and Alina Legend. Six wins and seven races for Sam Marquardt, your winner. Congratulations. This is your Fintown Custom Road Siding Mod Cart. Is out there in the 515. Don Desi is out there in the 585. Jordan Bellin's driving the 545. And you've got Colt Wiersma in the 577. Here we go, Shane. The green flag is flying this time by. Also in the field, you got Ben Wiersma in the 517 and Kyle Milan in the 502. 12 trucks headed down into three lanes wide of turn number one. Look at this. Who's it going to be? Looks like it's going to be Sikowski to that bottom. Gonna let the truck fade up, coming over the front doubles here. Zankowski, Wickman, Ringelstetter, and it looks like Wood up there in the top four as well. And Zankowski is a rookie here in the class. Came out of the 1600 buggy class. As we see, a little bit of uh, slick track surface again. Wickman and Wood both having some problems there. Yeah, Wood goes around the famous game. Chevrolet gonna go the wrong way. He'll have to get back under that wheel and start hard charging to the front. Look at the different lines. Look at Diesel Shannon, John Demony as well. Whitman now, look at already the mud is just starting to get caked up in the front of that Chevrolet. Yeah, and right behind him, Ringelstetter. That's a good strong run for Ringelstetter. He had some bad luck a couple of weeks ago at ERX, but running up in the top three, but Man, he's got a pack of wild dogs behind him from fourth on back. A, a ton of heavy hitters in this field. A lot of experienced drivers as they head past the chicane. Underneath the Walker Evans racing side into the Argonne corner. Look at Zinkowski rotating it nicely. Heading back towards the starting line. Here in Granite wide open. All the way down on the loud pedal trying to pull away from these guys right here. As Zikowski surprised all of us, I think, with his uh, win in round one, kind of put the rest of the field on notice that even though he's a newcomer, he's a rookie in the class, he's not to be taken lightly, and here again, he's leading at Grandin. Travis Peterson coming into your camera as well. Here is Zikowski at 537. is a former TNT truck and super stop truck. They actually made it into a stop truck now, so... A lot of work that has been done to that ride, and we're already starting to see smoke in the middle of the field. Ringelstetter in that 599, he's from Poinette. Teammates with St. Kelsey, so a good showing for that team right now as they're running first and third. With your defending class champ, Wickman, running in second in that 515. Ringelstetter in the 599. Trying to run his way up towards the front, going in the corral pit. There's Wickman. Here comes Travis Peterson. Remember Peterson, if I remember right, on the front straightaway last year, he had a bad, bad crash. And had to go back, do his homework, cut a bunch of tubes, put that truck back together. It's good to see him back out full time in 2020. Look at Wickman going right through the swap. Yeah, he kind of got uh, pushed a little bit wide, got out of the soft stuff, and. Once you're stuck in that deeper, loose surface, it's really hard to drive out of it. We've been going through Argonne turn, such a tricky turn, I'll see it time and time again. You really gotta tiptoe your way through. Staying that race through, oh, he pushes right there. Losing a little bit more track space. 515, red number plate, what does that mean, Shane? He's your defending class champion, trying to chase down another one. And he's doing the right thing, trying to get as many points as possible. Just pushing through those turns. He really has to rotate that truck. But you see a lot of them having some tough, tough issues. Now Zikowski goes to second. Zikowski now in second. Yeah, and Peterson in that triple five. He's gotten up and around Ringelstetter, so Peterson moves up into that third spot. Very consistent season so far for Peterson, but he hasn't been able to finish any better than third so far. 
Yeah, he's, he's being really consistent again, but he really just needs to keep fighting hard. He got a lot of laps left here in stock truck. There is Travis Peterson, Lime Green Truck in Vincent. Still getting his feet wet, doing a fine, fine job, putting in the time, putting in the work as he builds her own truck. So that's one thing, and one thing to say about these race car drivers. I mean, they're not no NASCAR drivers. They, they have to go home. They got to go work at nine to five. Then they call their buddies up and they're like, hey, you want to work on this off-road truck? And they're like, what? Yeah, let's put some hours in. We're going to go work on it for 40 hours and come out for 20 minutes. <laughs> going by our camera again. Three and a half second lead almost for Wickman, and there's Wickman in that 515. Yeah, nothing but clear track out front of Wickman right now. See Wickman though, she he's starting to rotate the truck a little bit earlier, getting that rear of the truck to rotate a little bit quicker. You don't want to create a snow cloud. These trucks, you just don't go anywhere. Yeah, and early on in this race, when the track surface is on the wetter side, it's, it's really about managing your mistakes, and Wickman really hasn't made any mistakes so far, and that's why he finds himself with the lead. We've got a side-by-side -side race for position. That's the battle for fourth, I believe. Ringo Center looks like he's beginning to show a little bit of a smoke show back there. Trying to get my diesel. Shannon looks like Shannon's been through a war. The bend signs are coming off that truck. Yeah, Ringlestead are definitely a little bit off the pace as we see more smoke pouring out the back of that Ford. I don't know, Ringo Stenner's starting to slow down. He might be coming off the pace. His day looks to be just about done. Going to pull off the right side of your screen. A lot of smoke definitely wants to say that. Maybe that could be a transmission issue on that truck. Looks like you were having some problems as well on that number 520. He was your winner in round number six back at Elk River. Back up front, Sikowski starting to reel in with it. Two different lines coming out of the gravel pit. Sikowski really trying to square it away and get that run on exit. Boy, Whitman bonsaiing off that Polaris Razor jump, bottoming out that truck. So definitely, we talk about the weight being a huge factor, especially on these trucks. They only weigh about 4,000 pounds, but you put four or 500 pounds of dirt on them, it really slows these lap times down. Yeah, absolutely, and, and horsepower is limited. These guys are running a restrictor plate to uh, helps manage the cost of the class a little bit because you're wasting your, your effort if you're trying to put a bunch of money into a motor with a restricted plate. Yeah, they definitely they have a restricted plate, a 4412 carburetor on there, so you're only pushing out a two-barrel carburetor trying to get as much horsepower out. And you talk about the exhaust on these cars, too. They, they go, it narrows down as you get through the exhaust, so you're really trying to breathe these big motors with nothing, so you really have to drive these cars. Well, Sikowski's still working, trying to catch back up to Whitman. We saw Sikowski out front early on, and one mistake came over to Whitman. They come down into Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one again, Whitman, Sikowski, and then Peterson and Shannon a little bit further back, battling for third and fourth. Sikowski running a fast line. Whitman just that fast this afternoon, the 515, last year's points champion. There's Sinkowski just tiptoeing his way through. It's hard to tell on the camera how deceiving that turn is. You come off the bar jump and you go up a little uphill and you can't see the other side of it. You just hope that your front end steers the right direction. Yeah, the trucks get really light up there on top yeah. of that hill too, so you're, you really have to manage the throttle as well as, as manage the steering wheel and, and try not to make a mistake there as they go up and over the Polaris Razor jump once again. This will end of the first half of this race and we've reached our mid-race caution. Zinkowski towards the tail end there really starting to reel in Whitman so we may see Zinkowski maybe set up a little bit better for dry track so as the track comes around he definitely looked fastest on that last lap before the caution but for now Whitman will hold the advantage and Zinkowski, Peterson, Shannon top four guys really checked out from the rest of the field. They really did. I mean, one and a half second lead Wickman had, but that lead is now gone away. You see our pace truck, Richie Kulov, picking up the field. And we're going to check down with Haley Shanley, the third member of our team. 
Thanks, friends. One of the things I love about this class in Stock Truck is so far this year, we have seen five different winners in just 16 points separate our top six in that points championship ship points race. So always fun to watch. They may have gotten a little bit spread out there in that first half, so watch what happens on this restart. You know, usually at Crandon International Off-Road Raceway, this is the end of the season for racing here in the Midwest, so that is what the big one drivers drivers lay it all on the line, but they need to throttle themselves a little bit this year because we still have one weekend of racing to go in just a couple weeks here back here in Crandon. So it's going to be interesting. The differences you'll see here racing this weekend versus World Championship weekend in years past. Thank you very much, Haley. Some great information. It's so cool to watch these trucks coming back towards the starting line. It looks like we have a truck coming on the inside. It's like Don Demony's truck must have a right rear flat tire. Yeah, he's going to pass the pace truck and go towards the pit area, try to get that thing changed. I don't think it's going to be enough time, though, to get him back out there before we get the green flag, and you just don't want to go that lap down. It's always hard to get it back here at Granite. Right, but I think he played it right here, Brent, because being that they're under caution right now, he'll be able to pull in, get this tire changed, and rejoin the race on the lead lap, so he won't give up that lap, so... By surviving to this mid-race caution on that flat tire, he's actually able to, you know, save himself a little bit of trouble later on. Yeah, it's not no NASCAR any car stop. You're not going to do it in 11, 12 seconds. It's going to take you well over a minute to get that 32 11 by 5 tire on the hub. We'll see if he can get back out here. But our top five right now is Whitman, Sinkowski, Peterson, Shannon, Wood. As they come around the famous Forest County Pottawatomie turn number one, there goes our pace car. This is it, the second half. Who's going to take the big win this afternoon? And we're back to green flag racing. Wickman played it kind of the oddball way there. Started in the, the middle of that restart zone. Trying to play some mind games with Sinkowski and the rest of the boys behind him there. Yeah, that's an advantage you have starting out front. You can kind of play that head game. And Sinkowski really didn't go away. He lost about two car lengths there on the restart. But watch, he really likes to drive it in deep here into the gravel pit. He's trying to get that run out. He kind of made a little bit of a mistake, and now he allowed Peterson to the inside. Yeah, Sinkowski is uh, pulling off. He's well off the pace now. Well, that's going to move Peterson in that triple five up into second place. Sinkowski off the track. It's going to give that spot to that man right there to 555 of Peterson. Here comes Shannon. Shannon trying to dip into the picture again. Yeah, Shannon didn't really have a great first half of that race. Had to deal with some traffic, but now he is pulled up to the back bumper of Peterson. That's the best battle on the race course as they head into the Argonne corner. Shannon's truck has been around a long, long time. Former points champion back in the day, Matthew Ives. That's his truck. They get a lot of work to it. They cut the frame on it, made it a short box. Is there Sinkowski getting towed off? He's going to have to go to the pits and try to figure out something that went wrong for the next round. Is here's our leaders. There's Whitman Peterson. That's here comes Wood. Stan Wood. We've seen him run up for a few times this year too. And He's now on the charge, maybe smelling some blood in the water, trying to capitalize on Peterson and Shannick battling one another. Justin at the famous game Chevrolet, back by my hometown. He really put a lot of effort into that ride of Stan Wood, trying to give him the best truck possible, always wrapping that machine. He's very, very quick. He just got to put laps together. It's not an easy task to go out and win one of these races. It might look easier sitting at your house watching on the screen, but I can tell you from experience, you really have to put these laps together. Now we see Shannon looking way to the outside on Pearson. Yeah, he just hung himself out to dry there, Brent. Actually opened the door for a moment for Wood, who's running in fourth. So no change in our running order this time. Boy, Shannon goes really, really wide. Now he buttons back up to Peterson, gives him a little up tap. Yeah, another push there from Shannon. That's going to open the door again for Wood. Janik's got to clean this up a little bit. That's two corners in a row where he made a mistake and opened the door for Wood. Yeah, he, he really gets a lot of good runs coming in this back section, especially 
going into the gravel pit, but you can get that good run, but if you can't exit that truck and capitalize on it, Peterson just going to keep running away and hide from that spot. Yeah, you saw another mistake there from Shannon in the Argonne corner. Yeah, he's really having some issues trying to steer that number 593 around this 1.7 mile facility. Fast, fast, straight away. Like I said earlier, Shane, Jared Brooksy is running about 94 miles an hour coming in that 180. Then you got Kyle and Duke and Green, they're all coming in at 100 plus miles an hour. So that is going to be very, very interesting coming in our cup races. Yeah, and as this weekend wears on, too, you'll see uh, bigger and bigger braking bumps developing as they come into that corner. They can really upset the truck. It doesn't look that drastic if you're watching the live stream at home, but watching it up close, that it gets really out of shape back there. Yeah, it does. It really upsets the truck. You really have to negotiate those turns perfectly if you want to win. And we're five laps in out of eight here this afternoon. It's stock truck. You're watching the 51st Players Off-Road World Championship races here in Brandon, Wisconsin. You're watching Champ Off-Road. Shannon trying to reel Peterson back in once again. Seems like Shannon might have the faster truck, but like we've said a couple times now, just keeps stacking up these mistakes. He's got to put together a couple clean laps here if he wants a run at uh, Peterson. Yeah, he's definitely trying to square these turns away, trying to grab that dry dirt on the inside. The track's really starting to lay out nicely. Drying out, perfect coming through Argonne turn once again. There's Diesel Shannon in that 593, trying to hunt down the triple five of Peterson. There's our leader, Shane, once again. Yeah, back up front, it's Whitman. So we saw Shannick there just about made contact with Peterson. Once again, though, it's like uh, Shannick can't get out of his own way at some points on this track. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. He's just overdriving that truck. And speaking of overdriving, Peterson getting squirrely. Over rotate. Here comes Shannick. They're side by side going over the rollers. We're going to have a drag race down into Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn one. It's going to be Shannick on the inside. Keep your eye on turn one, here they come. Here comes Peterson trying to square that turn away. Shannon's going to hold on to that position this time by. So finally, Shannon able to put the move on Peterson. About a lap and a half to go now here at Launderville Steel Stock Truck, round number seven for Brandon International Off-Road Raceway. No doubt about it, Brent, that truck is battle-tested right now. You see the bed sides flopping from side to side, so he's earned every inch of his track position so far as the white flag is about to come out for our leaders. We'll see if Wickman can hold on one more final time around. This beautiful facility there is Shannon. We are pretty much on top of the truck of Travis Peterson. We're starting to spread out now here with one lap to go. Yeah, everyone's getting a little bit more settled in now. The, the track has worked in really well. You see dust in spots again. The reason they put down so much water is with, with this uh, wind and the sunshine, they're, they're really trying to keep moisture in the track because the track dries out too much. It'll really get away from this track. Yeah, it really will, and you can see the tracker has done a fine job keeping that moisture in. A lot of mud on the front of Diesel Shannon, and he's just coming in so tight and pushing through those turns. He just needs to clean it up a little bit, and I mean, he could be our next round winner. He looks really, really fast. He's cleaning down some quick lap times, but not being really consistent as we look at Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one, one final time. We are on the white flag lap. Whitman still with a big lead here in the 515. Yeah, a great run for Whitman. Putting it all together, I mean, we talked about how important it is to, to stack, you know, solid, clean laps one after another. Whitman's done that all race here in the stock truck round number seven race. Although, look at this, with just a couple corners to go, Shannon starting to close that gap. Yeah, Shannon, like I said, he's been really, really fast. I just think there's not going to be enough time. He's going to run out of real estate here late in this race. Whitman going to try to tiptoe his way one final time here. Staring at the checkered flag. Whitman's going to do it. Last year's point champion going to take the big win this afternoon. 
So Shannick, a hard-fought second place. Wonder what that race for the lead might have been if we had just one more lap for Shannick to, to maybe close the gap a little bit more on Wickman, but fortunately for Wickman, that was the end of the race, and he is your victor. Shannick second, Peterson third. Stan Wood, another good run for him. He was fourth. Yeah, Stan Wood trying to bring it back into the top five and does here in Stock Truck. You're watching championship off-road. There is our world championship off-road racing final here, and that is our result. Travis Peterson, that was the battle of the race between you and Diesel. Tell me more about that. What was that like? Well, my spotter told me he was coming outside, and I'm like, got into that back corner, and I got a little bit too sideways. I had to let off. Allowed Diesel to keep his momentum going, and he snuck past me, so we'll, uh, we'll settle for it this time. We'll take the... Bringing some heat to tomorrow's event. Who would you like to thank for this one? I gotta take uh, Cal's Chop Shop, Custom Metal Specialist, Quality Exterior Siding, um, Aero Auto out of Green Bay, Andy Shock Service, Jerry Bear, Executive Realty, Peter James Photography, Cider Construction, TNT Auto Body, Ralph's Auto Salvage, um, NEW Concrete. We gotta thank Lunderbill for having this class, sponsoring our, the class, um, ATD Charlie for transmission. Yokohama tires, I just put those Yokohamas on the uh, ERX and they're hooking up like crazy, but I just didn't have enough to catch up with, with Colin, but I gotta thank my wife and my kids and everybody, all my family for all the help they do with me in the pit, so thank you. Travis Peterson, third in stock truck. Diesel Shannick, our second place finisher. Diesel, you found your way up to second place there, and towards the end, as the laps wound down, you seem to have found another gear, and you really closed that gap. So what clicked for you around that time? Well, I lost brakes just after the halfway point, so I was driving with the transmission, but I was coming. I just ran out of time. There was a lot of demo derby in the early part of the race, and I decided to lay back and try and wick my way through and save the truck, and just ran out of time. But uh, we got a fast hot rod, and we'll be back out tomorrow. I got to thank Bill's Auto. Pfizer Graphics, uh, Ryan's Custom Concrete, Big Iron, Cold Iron, Napa Vopaca, everybody that helps us out. I couldn't do it without these guys and my awesome crew. Um, can't thank these guys enough and all the fans. It's great to be here. Thanks. A very solid run for Diesel Shannick in second. And a dominating performance for Colin Wickman, our winner here today. What made the difference for you in that one? I don't know, I mean, that land rush, I'm not the hugest fan of it, but today it played out in our favor. It came out in second, and then one pass makes it a lot easier. A lot less dirt, a lot cleaner truck, and everything. I gotta give a huge shout out to Andy at Andy's Shock Service. He watched some practice yesterday, said he didn't like the truck, completely redid it, and man, it was on rails today. I thank my mom and my dad for all they do for me. The whole crew, uh, Badger Race Traps, Brian Mullen Motorsports, Bumgart Tire, um, HED transmission again, Andy Shocks, and uh, Wyatt Block for the moral support. Thank you. Colin Wickman, congratulations. This is your top three for Lumberville Steel stock truck. Back to you guys. The engines are starting to rev up here at 1600 single buggy. Pay attention. One of our flag guys going across, making sure everyone is ready. Phase up in the tower. The board is starting to slide across. Here we go. The steel is starting line right behind. You can read it there. Ready to drop the clutch at any given time. Jane, here we go. One more time. Here the reps all the back down the space line the board. There's the green flag. Our field of 16 cars here at 1600, but we headed down into turn number one. Who's going to pull the whole shot? Keep an eye on the center of your field. Hard to tell from our point of view. Looks like Pajinski with a nice start up the middle. And Jake Nelson actually pulled out the whole shot. Boy, Jake Nelson can't say enough about that kid. The 341 coming out front early to be a Holger car number 300. I believe that's Craig Pytle driving today. So
so many API rides running through these fields this afternoon. Three different lines. Here comes Nelson. Nelson stays at the top. Yeah, Nelson, it's early on in the race, but he's the only car in the whole field that's still clean. He's jumped out to the early lead. And... Oh, look at this. 351. Looks oh, like Booth, Booth is on the charge. Booth already trying to file his way up in the top five. Pashinsky now in that orange car. Losing a couple positions going through the finish line turn. And Billy Booth is your current points leader. He's leading points in light but he's leading points here at 1600 buggies. So definitely one to keep an eye on. He's up into the top three now and trying to get around that 300 car. Jake Nelson trying to open up a little bit of a gap here early in the 1600 single buggy class. Track looks to be in prime shape, heading back towards the starting line. Hard 180. Shift it down, then you're coming on exit. You're trying to shift up as quick as possible, getting all that speed. Then it's just flat out to Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one. And you Booth. Booth on the charge on the inside of Craig Pinel. They're side by side in a turn one, and Booth is going to take over second place. And 351 is just flat out flying here this afternoon. Him and his old man really have that car dialed. Oh, look at this, our leader. Had to get hard on the binders. They're trying to tow a truck off. Yeah, we had a car stop down there. Yeah, they tried to tow one of the buggies off and just got in the way, so that shook up our top three. And Brent, it looks like our pace truck is going to pull out there, so... We're going to reset this field here for you in just a moment. Not sure what the running order will officially be. I can tell you for sure that Nelson is your race leader right now. But they may do a little bit of shuffling here behind the pace truck. Yeah, that's just hard to try to put in perspective. You're in race mode. If you're Nelson, you're just starting to file off a couple laps. You're getting comfortable. You're like, man, this car is so fast. And then, hey, things like that happen. One of our trucks got in the way, and we're going to reset everyone once again. So we'll reset the field here. This will give everybody behind Jake Nelson a chance to maybe take another run at him. Should point out, this is Jake Nelson's third weekend in 1600 buggy. He's no stranger to the top of the podium when he raced in light buggy, won a few races, won a, a points championship. But making his entry into 1600 buggy this year and looked strong for those first couple laps. Yeah, you see Steinhardt on the hood of that car. Anytime you talk about Mark Steinhardt, just the years, the wins, just the longevity of these classes, he knows how the shocks work, he knows just where every bolt needs to be located to make these cars fast. And right now, man, Jake Nelson's the guy to beat. Yeah, we'll see Mark Steinhardt a little bit later on today in the Pro Buggy race, which will conclude our sportsman racing today. But Steinhardt is the, the active leader in world championship wins. He's got 12 world championships. I'm trying to make it 13 here this weekend. We'll see him later on. Wow, that is some feat in itself. He can get that done this afternoon. That'd be kudos to him and his crew. And Mark's a good individual. Like I said, he knows how to work these cars. And he put the time in, it really shows. Yes, tiny has been around a long time. He's won buggy races all over the North American continent, United States and Canada for decades and decades. All right, Haley Shanley is waiting trackside. She's got some information for us. Haley, what's going on down there? You know, we talk about Billy Booth, who is making moves out there. He is on his way forward. Well, Billy Booth, he's also looking to three-peat. Three wins in a row, coming off from two wins in ERX Motor Park in the preceding round. He is, like I mentioned, he is also at leading points in multiple classes. So, Billy Booth, don't rule him out. Thank you very much, Haley, and she's right. You can't rule out Billy Booth. He's pulling double duty, more track time. If you're a race car driver, the more you can see this track go away, the better you'll be in the end. So keep an eye on Billy Booth once again as we got a car going the long way around, maybe trying to get to pit lane.
About to reset this field. All right, looks like we're going to take a moment here to get the field back in the proper order. And they'll probably go off of the previous lap. I'm pretty sure they will. Get everyone re-racked, re-stacked. Here in 1600, single buggy. A lot of dirty cars out there, you can tell. A little bit muddy out there. This is off-road racing, though. That's what's so cool. You put some tear-offs on your helmet, and you just go. I mean, a lot of guys, they say, like the Schultz boys, they said they're coming into turn one. They can barely even see anything. Yeah, that's something that uh, all the drivers will have to contend with this weekend. We talked about the, the slick track surface with the, the heavy water that they're putting down. So we're getting word from race control that they're going to have to re-rack, re-stack them in the original order because we did not complete a lap here. I know one person who's going to be really frustrated with that. It's got to be Jake Nelson. Oh, for sure. You're sitting out front. You got it dialed. You're starting to pick off where you want to be on the track. You start to find the fast lines, and then, hey, we just shut it down again. So I can I can assure you he's ready for this restart. On the flip side of all this, Brent, the, the time that we're spending right now, the track is drying out. We still got this beautiful northern Wisconsin breeze blowing across the track. The sun is shining here. So the track's going to dry out. It's going to be good, fast racing. We might even see some dust towards the end of this one. Yeah, you never know. We could see some dust. They're definitely not going to put any water down while we're waiting right now. As you see, a couple cars starting to roll ahead, getting in their spot for this totally complete restart here this afternoon. Yeah, setting up the field for a rolling restart. Get a glimpse of the 315 car that's being driven by Corey Fisher, who also we saw in light buggy. That car belongs to Paul Hayward, and it is for sale. So trying to get into some buggy racing. If you're a Volkswagen enthusiast and an off-road racing fan, 1600 buggy may be the place for you to start. Go we'll talk to Paul Hayward. And, uh, you know, we joke that at the racetrack, everything's for sale all the time, but <laughs> that car is actually for sale. going to step aside here while they get things figured out here at Champ Wolf Road. Don't go anywhere. We just started here in the 1600 single buggy class. Traffic on that first start. So this yeah. might give him a new lease on life a little bit. Yeah, you're exactly correct. He really needs a break on this restart to get up towards the front because right now, I mean, just the speed that Jake Nelson's been showing, you really have to be there in the end. And remember, I don't know how this is going to mix up that mandatory competition caution because of the time frame. We'll have to wait and see. But a lot of racing left to go here in 1600 single buggy. The wind really starting to blow here. This afternoon, Mother Nature keeping that track pretty dry. And we've already talked about it a couple times now, Brent. The water truck, the, the water crews laying it down a little bit heavier than we're used to seeing. But again, that's just a fight, you know, to balance out the, the breeze and the sunshine that we have. Yeah, absolutely. You could go from one race where it's really, really sloppy and muddy to the next race. We could see dust and these guys couldn't negotiate these turns. So. It's not an easy job for our track crew to keep the track in prime shape, but they're doing a heck of a job here this afternoon. As Richie Kuloff going to take us by Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one. Once again, we should unleash all 16 of these cars. Who 
who can get the good jump off this start? Remember, that's Ambos on the right of your screen, Jake Nelson on the left. It's actually Ambos that's uh, in the pole position right now, so he will control the field as we come back to this restart. And our pace truck is pulling off, so Ambos now will pace the field back to the green flag. Just about to that first cone, they can restart anywhere between those two cones. And wow, look at that gap yeah, on the there it is. inside row. I don't know who's ever started fifth and sixth in the back. Pajinski. He tried to get a good run on that restart. There's Nelson open up a gap already. Yeah, another good start there by Nelson. You got Ambos on the inside. That's Trellstad, the number 380. Travis Trellstad looking to the outside of Ambos. Ambos looking to the inside. He makes contact. Coming out of the gravel pit once again. Going by the player's razor flyaway jump. There's Nelson. Yeah, Nelson, Trellstad, then it's Ambos. Looks like Dylan Parsons up there into the top four as well. Little mistake by Nelson giving over that race lead. Man, he just made one little mistake coming in the finish line turn. That's all it took. Now Trellstad looks to be out in front now with that 380 going in Argon turn. There's Bo Ambos. Bo Ambos. Boy, he's everywhere. And look who just joined the conversation there. That's the 351 of Billy Booth up into the top three. Booth is going to go to work on Jake Nelson. Nelson now looking to the outside of Trellstad, not going to be able to make a move there. Boy, did Nelson really wind out that lane up on the top by the starting line. Trying to carry his speed all the way through into Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one. Flat out, there's Trellstad again coming in. Look at the dust now starting to form. It's so hard to see in turn one as it is as it flattens straight out on exit. Board cars battling for the lead. Booth and Nelson touch. Good save there by Jake Nelson. He's going to slam the door on Booth. And here comes Parsons alongside Booth. Side by side as they head towards the gravel pit. Here we go. We're going to be three wide going to the gravel pit. Look at all the different lanes coming out of this section. Yeah, Nelson went way outside. But he's got a great run. They're going to almost be three wide as they head up and over the Polaris Razor jump. Nelson with that good run from the outside of the gravel pit back up into second place. Look at Dylan Parsons. Parsons goes to that inside. Outside, inside move. Trying to get on the back door of Nelson now. There's a 319 of Parsons. Look at him go. Yeah, Parsons was just pushing Jake Nelson. Now they're going to head for the chicane, and it looks like Parsons might have gotten that spot. Look at Parsons wind out his lane. Oh! Nelson and Parsons, so big trouble for both of those guys. Uh, a tough, tough break. Lead some laps in the beginning. Nelson, he's off the side of the track. We'll see if he can get that thing rewired. Nelson, still with your lead. And here comes Booth. Billy Booth, that 351 chain. Yeah, Booth working his way up through the field. He had to start all the way in 12th on that rolling restart. Trellstad holds the lead for now, but Booth is coming on strong. Trellstad coming in Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one. He has a lot of company. Here comes Billy Booth to the outside. Watch as he tries to cross over. Can he make the pass? Didn't know he had to get on the binders. Trellstad kind of took the lane away. I wouldn't call it a blocker at all, but... And just playing good, strong defense there by Trellstad. Now we'll watch Billy Booth go to work. He's going to set up way outside of the gravel pit. Yeah, watch this exit here. Booth should get a good run as Trellstead stayed in the bottom. 
Here comes that run by Booth. Can he get door to door? Side by side, up and over the Polaris Razor Jump. Booth is going to be on the inside, and he's going to take over this race lead. And that's what I was talking about earlier in the beginning parts of this show. I love the gravel pit. There's so many different opportunities to make a pass. Booth made it stick, and then, oh, man, he goes side by side with Trellstead again and says, I want that spot back. Trellstead now trying to chase down Billy Booth. Seems like both of those guys kind of traded mistakes for a, a lap and a half there. Yeah, you're right. He, they really did. They're like, okay, you make one, I'll make one. Now let's try to clean it up because if these two go neck and neck, it's going to be one heck of a war to the end. As you see, Trellstead now holds in a little bit of a gap on Billy Booth. Yeah, that's Alcox in that 336 running in third. Wow, good run by Alcox in that 336. About three seconds behind our leader. Booth, we'll see Booth, he's right on our camera, heading into Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one once again. Still Booth, Trailstead, Alcox, your top three. Alcox with a great run as they go down the front straight in front of this crowd here at Granite International Off-Road Raceway. Slowly reeling in Trellstead. Alcox has some magic working right now. Meanwhile, Billy Booth stretching his lead to about 15 car lengths as they go into the gravel pit. Alcox going to try the outside line, trying to carry that speed around the outside. That long way around seemed to play good for Billy Booth. Now that has a comfortable lead. Looking off a couple more laps coming into the finish line turn. There's Alcox. 336 is carrying his speed through. The green flag still out that time by. Trellstead moved over, did a nice job again playing defense there. 
Drillstad making his car quite a bit wider than it actually is here. And you see Johnny's really trying to put it together in turn one. He's trying to get the best exit as possible. Look at him just cutting across the course, just tiptoeing his way through. It seems to be working. He, he keeps trying it. That's what you have to do. You can't play follow the leader. You're not going to get around a guy following him. You really have to pick the faster way around. Yeah, Fitzgerald, he's got hundreds and hundreds of laps here at Granite International Raceway. Drellstad's never been here before, so. Yeah, kudos to Drellstad. He's holding off one of the best in the business. As remember, with everything going on earlier in this race, we will not have a mandatory competition costume. Fitzgerald continues to work on Drellstad, looking to the inside now. Vince has a little bit of a run as they go down the back stretch up the hill. Wow, look at this, John Fitzgerald looking to the inside. Who is going to outbreak one another? Fitz, he's got the preferred line, and he's already going sideways. Yeah, Fitz just pitched that car into that hairpin, and he's going to take over the race lead. See them fade out really, really wide. Here comes Trelson once again looking to that inside. Looks like Fitzgerald's going to hold on to that spot coming back towards Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one. John Fitzgerald, still your race leader, as laps are starting to wind down, Shane. Yeah, just about two laps to go here, Brent. Fitzgerald stretching his lead even more over Trellstad. Now about ten car lengths between first and second. Once again, it's all cocks up into the top three. John Fitzgerald still well out in front. Now late in this race coming by what will be our finish line. We'll have to keep an eye on our flag man. He had a green flag still waving. Another cool shot coming into the infield section. Through this very, very slippery turn. There's Jake Nelson. Back up to speed. Well, well off the pace of our race leaders. But I can't say enough about John Fitzgerald. He's been around a long, long time. Him and his father building race cars, setting the cars up, coming back year after year. And he's just one well put together race car driver, and he knows what goes wrong. with these cars, you can actually babysit it. If you know something's breaking or you're used to the part going bad, you can actually just take care of it in the end. And yeah, Fitzgerald, a ton of experience in short course racing. Won a uh, Super Buggy Championship just a few years ago. Also, for a little while, dabbled in pro light. So, a ton of experience. We talk about it all the time. There's no replacement for seat time, and when you have a, a wide variety of racing experience, all that factors in. Now it looks like our leader, Johnny Fitzgerald, coming up through some lap traffic. Good sportsmanship by our lap drivers to get out of the way. Let the, race, the leaders race this thing out. There's Jake Nelson. I had him all the way down to 11th on our board. Jake not having a good end to his day. There's a white flag being displayed one more time around, Gene. Yeah, Fitzgerald, a little bit of a wild one here, but now he's in control. But 20 car lengths now over Trellstead, the number 380 car. Alcock still holding strong there, a third good run for those guys. Yeah, the 336, really, really nice run. Set seven seconds back. You're on top of this podium, especially in the top three. You're doing something right. The 16 cars in this field to start this race, and there's about 11, 12 of them that can win at any given time. One last time on to the land rush start. Straight away for John Fitzgerald. Might have to contend with one more lap car. I believe that's Nelson up ahead of Fitzgerald. Fitz start to come up on the back of Nelson. We'll see if they keep that gap coming in front of the crowd for the final time. And Fitz put it together. A lot of hard work and determination to get that car back up front. Going through 
Baldy jumped very, very nicely. The compression and rebound on those shots are set and dialed. Just look at Fitz. He goes from the outside all the way across and took his way through the inside. As you see lap traffic now, it doesn't look to be a factor. No, Nelson's just fast enough that he's going to stay out of Fitzgerald's way. Nelson will finish on the lead lap, although a few positions down. And there's the checkered flag. John Fitzgerald will take the win here in round number seven. Really stretched his lead towards the end of that one. Trellstad will be second, Alcox third. Then Parsons and the other Trellstad car rounding out the top five. There's Jake Nelson, the 341 seen him right by Johnny Fitzgerald, but he is almost a lap behind Fitz at the end of this one, the 1600 single buggy. They certainly did an exciting podium. We have two first-time career podium finishers, Ben Alcox, our third-place finisher. How good does it feel to have the monkey off the back? Oh, man. We've been trying for this for so long, and it feels so good. What did it take in this one to hold on to a podium finish? Obviously, consistency was key for you there. Yeah, I was just trying to, uh, we, there was a little chaos early on. We got, made our way up to the front, and I was just trying to click off some clean laps and hang on to it. Who would you like to thank? Uh, all my sponsors, MGD Industrial, Beyond Red Line, Five Point Fabrication, Reveal Design Shop, uh, my, my mom, my dad, my brother, my wife, everybody that helps on the car, Jake, my brother-in-law, Steve, it's the, Everybody, there's a huge team effort. Matt Gerald, there's so many guys. Shock Tech, everybody's behind us. It's so happy to finally put it here for him. Well, congratulations, a job well done. This is Ben Alcox, our third place finisher. And now you're your first time here at Crandon. You claim the second place finish. That's a, and you even led for a bit. So what did it take out there to find such results your first time out here? Well, I just tried to keep my concentration and uh, keep my ear out for my spotter and uh, try to go fast, I guess. Who would you like to thank? Well, I'd like to thank TM Manufacturing, my mom and dad, uh, my spotter, Tony, and the rest of my friends and family. Congratulations on the second place thank finish. You. And John Fitzgerald, our winner. You know, out there, you were really flexing your knowledge of this place, such extensive knowledge here. But that's not without hard work and determination. So what all went into this win for you today? Uh, it was a, I kind of made my work out for myself, spinning out there on that first lap after we our restart. And uh, I just put my head down. And uh, Bruce Fraley gives me an awesome car to drive and competitive edge, put a motor in that thing. And uh, we just started digging and picking one off at a time. And uh, we weren't stopping until we were at the front. And uh, that's what we come for. Uh, couldn't be here without all you fans coming out, everybody, uh, Fabtech for the hospitality, uh, the Goodwin guys, every, all the, everybody at home, the girls, the old lady, thank you. Congratulations, this is Fitzgerald, Trellstad, and Alcox, your top three in 1600 single buggy. Back to you guys. Polaris Razor Jump, that big jump down there in the middle of the track, is that when you're coming up and it's blind, you see the top of the jump and then... Some people aim for a tree or for a high line pole. You just pick one thing you want to be pointed at as we're underway here, Brent. Green flag for the 170 side-by-sides. The 170s are off, coming into Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one, three, four wide already, and look at the dust. It's like that's number 22 running out front. That's Cody Krantz. Ella Holcher in the mix as well, Raymond Denninger. Looks like Carson Greco's worked his way up to the front as well. Look at Krantz coming to the inside, going through the barn turn. Already with about a two, three car length gap. Here comes Holger. Ella Holger is your current points leader here in the race driven 170 side by side class. Actually the most dominant points lead of any driver in any class so far in the Champ Off Road Series. Look at her come on the outside. She's gonna try to make the pad stick. Going into the gravel pit. Trying to go a long way around. Cran still holding on to that bottom spot. Oh, contact! Yeah, that was Denninger in that number 11. Looks like he bounced off of the 155 of Carson Greco. 
Yeah, you really don't want to do that. You scrub any kind of speed. Remember, we're on limited horsepower here. And the Razor 170s, the class just keeps on growing. What a stepping stone here in Champ Off Road. Ultra's gonna open the door a little bit. Greco looking to the inside through Calamity Corner. There's Greco, that 155. Red plate, remember, pass points champion. Yeah, we've seen Greco running up front just about all season long, of course. Hasn't quite matched the consistency of Ella Holcher, and that's why she has the points lead. Cran still out in front. Still holding on to that position, going through the barn turn once again. Just flat out wide open, trying to carry as much speed as possible in that number 22 bikeman performance car. Our top four is starting to run away from fifth on back. They go by the suites here in Grandin. Sticking to that inside line, the shortest way around here, this 1.7 mile facility. And oh, that looks to be a number 13. And yeah, that's Abigail Bone. Up against the tractor tire. See if we can get her back underway. And look at this battle for our lead. Yeah, starting to heat up. Holcher is back in the mix now. And Greco putting all kinds of pressure on Cody Krantz. Here comes Greco to that inside. Gonna try to play single file till they get there. Look at the face shield up on Krantz, our race leader. So maybe vision problems early on. Can't see out of that shield. If you look inside the cab chain, he definitely has that shield up. Yeah, fortunately for him, though, he's running out front, so I guess clean air, you got to take it when you can get it. He's holding off Greco right now as they come back onto the front straight. Crisscrossing in front. Final Shimmick Hughes. Prost looks to be in the top five right now in the 71. Carson trying to reel in our race leader once again. Such an even field here this afternoon in the Razor 170s. You are watching Champ off road. Let's watch Greco go to work on Kranz as they head down once again for the gravel pit. Look at Kranz, he's trying to hold on to that inside. Has some company going on the inside of the gravel pit again. Boy, that bike been riding that 22 is fairly quick here this afternoon. Here comes Ella once again. Holter trying to get a run alongside Greco. It's not going to happen there. Greco again going to try to get to the inside of Cody Krantz as they hit into Calamity Corner. There's a good look at our finish line here this weekend. And look at the dirt already starting to get tore up. Going through this little chicane down back in front of the crowd. Normally we go off into the back section, but these cards, limited horsepower, we keep them on the short track here this afternoon. Boy, Cran still doing a good job out front. Yeah, he's had his hands full with Greco pretty much right from the start of this race. We've seen both of these guys run up front all year. Mixing it up near the front of the uh, pack. Pretty much every round. Holter has been the uh, most consistent, though, as I said earlier. She's got the points lead, trying to maybe pad that points lead a little bit if she can work her way up to the front. Here we go, Greco once again. Going to that inside. Trying to open up that gap a little bit to the bottom. Man, Krantz is just that fast, just holding on to that lead. Look at Holger running the bottom side, trying to get as much speed as possible on exit. Yeah, just Holger throwing. trying a different line than our, our front two cars. She's got to watch out, though, because Denninger is right behind her. Yeah, I was just going to say it. Denninger now reeling in our top three. All of them look to be in lockstep. Oh, look at Holger. Holger goes a little wide. Benninger looks to take that spot in the number 11. Yeah, it looks like Denninger able to move up into third, so Holcher down to fourth. 
Back out front, though, it's all Krantz right now. Still got a back bumper full of Carson Greco, though. Yeah, Greco's not going away. Krantz just needs to hold on to that spot. We're three laps in out of five, so keep an eye on the 155. We'll see if Greco can get a little bit of a run here, but they're playing single file here, so it's pretty, pretty tough for Greco to make a pass on Krantz, but man, I might be able to put my own foot in my mouth. Yeah, looks like lap traffic might come into play. Look at Greco trying to make a run on the outside. I just don't know if these cars have enough horsepower to make an outside pass work here, though, Brent. Well, here's some slower traffic. We'll see if they can use them as a pick. No, they both get through very clean. So Kranz, Greco, Denninger, Holzer, Votis, your top five. Good, tight racing up front of this one. Greco again, now he's gonna dive underneath Kranz. Wow. Trying the outside, inside move. Nice little crossover pass. We'll see if he can make that pass stick. And look at this chain. One more lap to go. Who's it gonna be, Greco or Kranz? Your top two. That was a good, strong play there by Greco to get the inside line away from Krantz through Calamity Corner. Now with less than one lap to go, he will pace this field here in the race-driven 170 side-by-sides. Greco, Krantz, your top two. There's a 22 of Krantz. About a half a second behind our leader in that 155. 2X Motorsport ride. And boy, they haven't changed it up much. You know, whoever's out front, they're just sticking to that bottom side, just carrying that speed, trying to stay home. Yeah, really good consistent lines by all of our fastest drivers in this one. Really the only mistake out of anybody in the top four was Holter when she gave up third place to Denninger. Look at this, Denninger trying to go to that inside, trying to go through the gravel pit, pick off another spot. This one isn't over yet. Our leader, Greco, in the 155 looks to be in the right position to take the checkered flag. But second on back is yet to be decided. Here we go. One final time down into Calamity Corner, headed for the finish line. There's the checkered flag, and Carson Greco from Gilbert, Arizona, takes the win. Krantz is second, Denninger third, and Holter is fourth. Good close racing between our top four in that one. Took Greco to a couple laps ago in that 155 to get the job done, but he does it here in Champ Off-Road. A lot more racing yet to come here this afternoon. You were just watching the Razor 170 class, and we talk about it being a stepping stone. I can't imagine five, six years down the road where these drivers are going to be as our pace car will pick up our top three and bring them to the podium. There's your final results. Greco, Krantz, Deininger, hold your bonus. Raymond Deininger, congratulations on the podium finish here, your second in points. Tell me, what did it do to take this podium finish here today? I don't know. Well, tell me about the speed. Where are you at on track? Were you feeling the fastest? Uh, on the straightaways. Bad fast track for these straightaways. Who would you like to thank for the podium finish? Race driven players, Kazi's victory signs, and my mom and dad. Raymond Danger, our third place finisher here today. Congratulations, buddy. And Cody Kranz in second. Come on up here. We were just talking before the interview here on how much fun these tracks are for you. Why is Grandin so much more fun for you? What do you like about it? Fast. It is fast indeed. Definitely suits your driving style. Who would you like to thank for this one? My mom and dad, bike man, Fox, ERL. Cody Kranz, a man of few words, congratulations on the second place finish. And Carson Greco, man, that was a nail biter all the way down to the end. Talk me through that race and the position swaps you had going out there with Cody. Well, what made the difference for you? You were obviously able to make a pass as the laps wound down. What did you find out there? 
you just follow the person until they make a mistake? Yeah, it's definitely a game who can make fewer mistakes. Who would you like to thank for the big win? Um, thank my mom, my dad, my brother, my grandpa, 2X Motorsports, Reliable Air Conditioning. Carson Greco, congratulations on the big win. This is your race driven side by side 170 division. Back to you guys. Off road raceway, we are now witnessing mod cars. Here this afternoon, Shane. Yeah, these are the uh, 450 mod carts, so a little bit uh, faster yet than the mod carts we saw earlier. It looks like there's going to be five cars taking the green flag here. Go ahead, send us down our starting lineup, Brent. From Abrams, Wisconsin, driving number 44 is John Holger, alongside of John from El Cajon, California. Driving the number 200 is Braden Geramonte. Alongside of Brayden, also from El Cajon, California, Bronson Cheramonte will start in that third spot. Then it's Ethan Ebert in the 57, and then Jaden Ruby in the fifth spot. So five cars, but very, very quick cars, Shannon. I've been able to watch these guys on the West Coast and get to call their races. These guys get up and go, especially at the Cheramonte. Yeah, crazy power-to-weight ratio. I think it would be the best power to weight ratio of any class here at Grand International Off Road Raceway this weekend. It looks like it is going to be the 577 of Ethan Ebert out front. You see another car behind swapping there. Wow, well, already it looks like John Holger. Something might happen to John Holger in that 44. He pulled out of our camera. There's Ebert and Cheramontes now. Yeah, it's absolutely wild how fast these carts accelerate out of these corners. Cheramonte, look at he's putting his hand up, so maybe the sun playing a little bit of a factor early on in this race. Because he's out front, definitely not dodging any kind of dirt this afternoon. Ebert giving chase, he's running in second. Yeah, Chiramontes, they've been around a long, long time. They know how to drive these cars and get up and go. I believe that's a rebate for the number 550 running in third. And up front right now is Chiramonte. Looks to be in control early on. Chiramonte opening up a pretty big gap already early in this race. 450 four-wheeler engines on these cars. They get up and go. Look at them just dancing that front steering. Yeah, you can tell there's a lot of power there, the way you can sort of drive with the back end of these cars. Really letting it hang out there, driving, the, you know, steering with the, the right foot, so to speak. And Cheramonte is still extending the lead that he has for the rest of this field. Braden and Bronson Cheramonte, the new Cheramonte cars that are out on track right now. Just flat out flying, Cheramonte trying to clip off some laps here. Going through the gravel pit, you can just see the speed difference. Yeah, these cars are so nimble too, it's incredible how much speed they can actually carry through, through a, even a tight corner like the gravel pit. Yeah, they really can. They, you can witness some mistakes by these drivers, but there's so much horsepower to weight ratio. Like you said, it's like driving a Pro 2. They can correct themselves and they get a little out of shape in a quick hurry. Coming through the front doubles once again. Two out of ten laps are complete. It's Cermonte and Eber here top two. Dance in that car around the finish 
baseline turn, clicking off another lap. Yeah, three laps down, seven laps to go. There were 10 laps here. Jeremonte, Ebert, and Uribe, your top three. Haley and she said it perfectly I mean you look at a 400 to a 450 there is a difference and that's why we have two separate classes as we look back on our screen that's Cheramonte and Ebert your top two see if Ebert can hold down that spot maybe pick up that little bit of steam that was left on the track of oh, Cheramonte I don't know that Cheramonte is so fast yeah Cheramonte just left everybody else in his dust there in the first half of that race here comes Brayton Cheramonte. Look at that. They're drafted going into the gravel pit. Yeah, good, close racing. Man, Ebert absolutely has his hands full right now with Cheramonte. Brayton Cheramonte flying off the Polaris Razor Jump, trying to get by Ebert. Remember, we just went by the halfway flank, so this is it. The last five laps, you're watching right in front of you. Here's Ebert, Jeremonte, doing battle in the infield section. Once again, up and over the barn jump. Headed for turn two, Jeremonte again looks to the outside, but didn't have quite enough of a run there. Now he's going to try to duck underneath Ebert, so the battle for second continues to rage on. Down into the gravel pit, Jeremonte looks to the outside, now tries to dive underneath. Look at Jeremonte, side by side. That's Brayton in that 573. Let's see if he can make that pass stick. Bonsai off that jump again. Yeah, big airtime over the Polaris Razor jump. And there you go, Jeremonte now up into second place. Bronson, Jeremonte out front, Brayton, Jeremonte in second. See our scoreboard four laps ago that time by. Six out of ten laps complete. Might have a car off track that last time. 
drive by, we'll have to see. But right now, it is Cheramonte in that 573. There is Bronson up front. Bronson Cheramonte in the 574. RTL ride coming towards that Polaris Razor jump again. Bronson's been running some really good clean lines in a lot of these corners, Brent. Really masterful display of, of his driving prowess today. Yeah, he's really got his head down, right direction, just putting down laps. He's really just doing what he needs to do, just running that fine line on the cushion. Coming back in front of the crowd here at Grand International Off-Road Raceway. That 574 is just hooked up here. This afternoon, just skimming through, almost up on the grass on that jump. Yeah, it's amazing how, how quickly he reopened that lead back up after that mid-race caution. Just over two laps to go now here in the 450 Mod Cards race. Bronson Cheramonte just looks untouchable right now, Brent. Yeah, he really does. Just running his laps. Just glad to be here in Cranon again for the 51st anniversary. One lap to go that time by. We did see the white flag being displayed. Time is definitely running out for Braden Cheramonte. We'll see if both of them can end up on top of the box this afternoon. We don't even see his name up on the chart. That is the 44 of Johnny Holger. So seven definitely went wrong early. One final time down into the Polaris Razor Gravel Pit. Bronson Cheramane, flag to flag win if he can hold it together for one more jump and one more corner. I think he's gonna do it. He's coming here, one turn to go, like Shane was saying, that hard right-hander. Gonna stare at the checkered flag that time by, gonna take the win. The 574 of Bronson Cheramonte. Braden Cheramonte across the line second. That's going to leave Uribe in third. Brent, we talk quite a bit when we're watching sportsman racing about, you know, so called stepping stone classes or kind of entry classes. And, and this is one of the paths you can take. You can start the short course card and then move up through the card classes. We've seen a, a lot of really, really talented drivers that came out of these card classes that are already up in the pro trucks now. Yeah, for sure. You look at the Andersons, Ronnie and RJ Anderson, they've come through the mod card. Thank you so much, Jaden Uribe in third place. Tell me, you know, to come here at Cran, this is such a fast track. You guys are throwing these carts around. It looks so flawless out there, so smooth. Tell me, what is it like out there to be able to find success? Uh, it's definitely one of the fastest tracks we've been on all year. Uh, to be here at Crandon means a lot with all the fans, the environment, the energy around here, how much love there is for the sport. Uh, it's really awesome to see that here. And uh, I want to appreciate the fans for coming out. Thank you, Crandon. Uh, it's definitely special to be here. And tell me more about your sponsors. Who's helping you get up here this weekend? Uh, my uh, biggest sponsor is my parents, so in Tara. So shout out to you guys, uh, Cameron for my car. Uh, and there's probably a few people, but I cannot think of it because I'm so happy to be out here. So whoever I'm forgetting, thank you. Uh, but thank you, Crandon and Tara, Full Tilt, and everyone here. Thank you. Well, we're lucky to have you here. Congratulations. This is Jaden Uribe in third place here for 450 Mod Cart. And in second, Braden Charamonte. The bros one and two. Tell me what uh, what went on out up there from your perspective. Yeah, that was a really crazy race. The start of my car shut off, so I was a little bit behind, but caught back up and got to third before the halfway caution and uh, finished that game. It was pretty good. Well, you had some work to do, that's for sure. You made it happen. Who would you like to thank? I want to thank uh, my grandpa for all we just rest. Uh, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, uh, Full Tilt, Swift, RTL, AIM, STG. RTL and everybody else, thank you. Braden Charmonte, our second place finisher.
and Bronson Charmonte, our winner here today. A flag to flag win. Such a strong finish for you. What do you feel was your strength here this afternoon? Uh, I'm able to drive the car so hard into the gravel pit and get off the car and just gap everybody. It was, it was really fun and had a lot of power in the motor tonight. Who would you like to thank? Uh, I think my mom, my dad, Mason, Luke, uh, OCC, and Ortega, RTL, my grandpa for all the support he gives us, uh, all my parents, Cameron, Swift, Full Tilt, SEG, Aim Data Sports, um, anybody else forgot, thank you so much. Can't do it without you guys. Bronson Charmonte, your winner here today. Let's get loud for your top three in 450 mod card. Race. This is going to be some kind of showdown. Yeah, you see it if you're watching the live stream with us or if you're here at the track, you see it on the big screen. They got them staged three rows deep for this start, so you know this is going to be a wild one. There's a lot of very fast guys in this class. Yeah, there's a lot of fast race car drivers. And there we go, the green flag flies. See the two Artie Cats on the inside. See who gets to the first turn first. Look at, oh, we already got a car upside down collected. Big a trouble. bunch of different cars. Vader got involved there at the end. It looks like the 25, that's 21 of Vader. Man, just like a parking lot in turn number one, I can definitely tell you we will be coming to the caution. They're gonna hold this race. So you got the 21 of Bayer involved, the 21X of Matt Janier from Gladstone, Michigan also involved. We're gonna take another look. Let's see how this shook out, Brent. Yeah, Matt Chenier trying to get out of the way and just made contact and man, hard, hard hit. Going upside down, collecting a couple other cars. Yeah, a few other cars suffered some damage. I see the 72 of Opsal is a little bit bent up on one corner down there. What a hard, hard hit, you're right. A yeah, tough break for Josh Bayer. We saw him win a couple of weeks ago at ERX. Looks like he'll be out of this one as he's still parked and got a uh, broken left front wheel as well. The turn over there in the 99 got through turn one clean. Man, it's not an easy task to come into turn one when you have 10 cars, let alone 30. Something has to give and definitely a bunch of cars just getting all crossed up, putting it against the K rail. And yeah, real quick, Brent, we can. Uh, Tell everyone who's in the field since we got uh, cut short on our our lead up time to that one before we could get to the lineups. So the 88 is Tim Christensen, 99 is Mike Letourneau, 15 is Johnny Henches, Chase Cleese is out there in the number 12, Colin Kearns is in the number 10, Derek Lieberg in his number 36. We saw the 21 of Josh Bayer. He's unfortunately out of this race after that contact in turn one. Trevor Bushmaker is in the number three. Jake Jorgensen is in the number 11. Jake Kosmecki is the number 94. Aaron Hilgard is number seven. Your points leader, Dylan Marquardt, is number 22. Matt Borschinger, the number 58. The number 59 is Tim Lemeron. And the number 98 is RJ Lego. We got a bunch more in this one still. Great lead better will be in the number 28. Tyson Marquardt, Jim Esperl, Mason Tesmer, Robert Shepard will be in the 20th spot. Then Aaron Messenger, Kyle Veden, Dawson Van Zyl, Christine Bone will be in the 24th spot. Paige Rahanowitz from Park River, Michigan will be all the way in the 25th position. Nicole Fisher, Austin McGee, Dustin DeGrand, Bryce Carlson, Stacey Bush, Matt Chenier in the number 21X will start in the 31 spot. And Brandon Thorson will round out this 32 car field. We'll see if we can get them re racked, restacked, and get through turn one clean this time, but I can't make you any promises, Shane. Yeah, for sure we've lost Bayer and Janier. I believe they've both dropped out. I want to say that's the number 55 also, one of the cars that has pulled off. Janier, a good buddy of mine, tough, tough break. He's been trying to get his feet wet in this class for a couple different years now. He's good friends with Kyle Kleiman and the Kleiman team, and they're trying to get him to finish up in the top five. And when you come in turn one, things like that happen. So tough break for Matt. Hopefully he gets it back together. All right, looks like we're going to be doing a two-by-two two rolling restart here as we get back underway in the Sportsman side-by-side -side race presented by Power Sports 1. 
Well, we knew that there would be some, some drama and some action in turn one at some point this weekend. Fortunately for a couple of our competitors here in Sportsman Side by Side, and it cost them a shot at victory today in round number seven. See our pace car picking up the field two by two. As all the cars, all 33 of them, coming up over those rollers behind them. That is the starting line here at Crandon. As we come back to the green flag, of course, no laps were completed, so this is actually a, a full restart. And Tim Christensen is going to be on the pole. So he will control the field as they get to the, uh, the cone zone where the, the driver on the pole can choose any time, any spot between those two cones to take off, and that's what actually restarts the race. Yeah, you'll see it right here. That's Letourneau on the inside in that 99. Christensen is on the outside, that 88. Pay attention to Christensen. And those cones that Shane were talking about, they're right there on the right of your screen. Take off, and there he goes. A nice jump. Letourneau's been fast all season long, so keep an eye on your top three. Yeah, there's Johnny Hedges as well. Yeah, Hedges, he's really showing a lot of speed as well. Oh, it looks like we have some debris in the back. Everyone looks to be getting through that turn very clean. Yeah, there they goes head the gravel Laterno, pit. Laterno down to the inside of Christensen in the gravel pit. Laterno is going to take over the race lead. Christensen's going to come charging back, though. Now Hentges trying to work his way up into the mix as well. Just about put his bumper on the back bumper of the 88 of Christensen. See, they're coming on the inside of the short course here in Cranon. Look at that nice drone shot. Yeah, Hilgard on a nice charge there. He just went from fifth to third in one corner. Good, strong move by Hilgard. Yeah, Hentges drops back a spot as well going through. Underneath our banners by the barn turn towards the Swedes, dropping off that big flyaway into the famous gravel pit. All of them trying to rotate those cars really, those cars very early to try to get them squared away to get a good exit. On the end, Christensen not going anywhere. Letourneau still up front that 99 Speedworks ride. Yeah, it seems like Letourneau got around Christensen fairly easily, but now Christensen's not going away whatsoever. Christensen just putting some laps in here. Remember, we had a tough break in turn one. Had to reset the field two by two, rolling restart. Here's Christensen, look at him go wide, trying to carry that speed, getting into the back bumper of Letourneau. Watch the speed as they come into the gravel pit. Who can outbreak who? Yeah, Christensen had a pretty good run down that back stretch. Now he's going to look underneath. Looked like Letourneau pushed wide just a little bit. No change in our running order up front. It's still Letourneau, Christensen, and Hillgard. And Marquardt, your points leader, he's up into the top four. Turno having a hard time turning that machine on the infield section. Going by the crowd here. And Cranon going off the barn jump once again, staying to that inside. The track really starting to dry up nicely, creating a lot of different lines through here. Both of them sticking to that inside shorter way around here, heading towards the gravel pit one more time. Our leader, Letourneau, trying to dust out Christensen. There's Hilgard in that number seven. That's Marquardt, Jorgensen. Your top five. Let's look at the panel coming off. Yeah, him just losing a whole side panel there for that number 15 Speedworks machine. 
another lap in the books. It's Letourneau, Christensen, and just Hilgard, your top four. Colin Kearns up into the top five as well. Riding along now with Hilgard as he is trying to reel in the 15 of Hentges. And he's starting to pick him away just little by little. And number seven ride very, very fast. Here comes the number 10. Yeah, and Colin Kearns. Number 10. Yeah, Kearns. It's always nice seeing Big on the visor. Makes our job a lot easier. He can read the names on these cars. Sometimes you get a little bit of mud on the visors. It's hard to tell. Let's Here he see. comes. Yeah, Kurtz definitely putting some pressure on Hilgard now. Yeah, Kurtz looking at that inside coming through the infield. Nothing there yet. Hilgard still holding on to that spot, that number seven. Back up front, Mike Letourneau on that number 99. That's about a five, maybe six, seven car length lead over Christensen. Top two guys, though, Brandon, really checked out on the rest of the field. Yeah, they really have. I see Christian, he's about a second off of Letourneau's time. Hedge is about three, about three and a half off of our leaders, so definitely starting to split away a little bit. At 99, though, Letourneau is very, very quick as he comes to that mandatory competition caution that time by in that number 99 speed works wildcat ride. See if he has enough left in the tank to nail this one down this afternoon. Again, you're watching Champ Off Road. Tell your friends and family, go log on to championshipoffroad.com and watch us live throughout this whole weekend. Well, just to reset the field, it's the 99 of Laterno out front. Christensen is second, Hench is third, and it's Hillgard. Kurds and Bushmaker. And we will see a Delaware style restart for the sportsman side by side, just like we saw earlier in the day for Light Buggy. Put the uh, current front runner all by himself on the front row and then stack him up two by two right behind him. Eternal has enough. Hedges is right there in that 15. So a little bit of a wild start to this one, Brent. When the uh, the first start, the land rush style start, didn't go so well with 32 cars trying to pick their way through turn one, all work together. We restart it. Then we got five complete laps in the book, and here we are. We got five laps to go, and Mike Letourneau is in control. Letourneau's in control. Let's see what he can do in this second half. Five out of ten are in the books. Watch the green flag. There it goes. Five to go that time. by For Letourneau, here comes Christensen. Christensen tells Hedges and get out of the way. Trying to run down my teammate. Yeah, it looked like Hedges just didn't get a very good jump at all on that restart. Now as our field heads down into the gravel pit, man, Christensen putting a lot of pressure on Letourneau. We saw another car go up on the bike back behind. Looks like we might have a little action going down in the gravel pit, but up front, 
It's Laterno, Christensen, and Hedges, and there we go. As on the back side of the gravel pit, we'll see if we can get that car back up on its wheels and out of the way before our leader has come. Yeah, it looks like the 58 of Borsinger. It's a tough break for him. We'll have to see. Maybe it'll just be a local caution, but being down in the gravel pit right down in the center, it's going to be tough to send our leaders through. We'll have to keep an eye. Here comes our leaders right now. The Turno, Christensen, and Hedges. Your top three, Hilgard Bushbaker, round out our top five as they're all just in lockstep, just creeping their way around the local caution. Looks like we're gonna keep the green flag out though, Shane. Yeah, nice work by the uh, Grandin track crew, the safety workers out there, able to keep that to a local yellow. Try to keep this race moving forward here as we've got a good one going on with Laterno. He's got his hands full with Christensen right now as they come back around the old Parsons Pond and onto the front straight. Laterno holding on to that inside spot again. Christensen, look at this. Yeah, great run by Christensen as they go through turn two. They're going to be almost bumper to bumper as they go past the skyboxes and down the flyaway. Not wasting any time. Look at Christensen going to the outside. Out drives the turtle in the gravel pit. Goes a little wide. We'll see if he can put something together. Laps are starting to wind down. Yeah, it was a real strong effort there by Christensen. Looks like he might have been able to make that pass stick, but unfortunately pushed just a little bit too wide. So Laterno can stay in control for now. Three laps to go in this one. Christian really just needs to settle down, just pick his marks, try to make a good pass stick, and you really have to set it up a couple turns before, so when he gets to him, sometimes it's just too late. Make one block pass by Letourneau, it's hard for Christensen to get around, so we'll have to pay attention. Yeah, we'll see if Christensen tries to get another run as they head down into the gravel pit. Not sure if he can make that outside line work. Yeah, this time he's going to stay right in line with Laterno and run that inside. Laterno doing what he needs to do. We're going to click off another lap. We should be going to two laps to go this time by. Keep an eye on our flag man. Still with the green flag out. Yeah, two laps to go here at Sportsman Side by Side, presented by Power Sports One. Pentius at this point running in third is just waiting for anything to happen between Laterno and Christensen. Something that he can capitalize on, but no opportunity so far as once again, Christensen getting a great run on Laterno. Oh, look at this, Laterno made a little bit of a mistake. Here comes Hedges. Hedges wants a piece of this top two. Look at Christensen trying to make that pass stick. I don't know how this work gets tricky on exit. Here comes Hedges. A little bit of contact between Hedges and Christensen as they came out of the gravel pit. It's going to be white flag out this time. Look at Christensen look to the inside again in Calamity Corner. Man, it's there. He just has to be there in the end. Here it is. They make a little contact. The white flag's out. Keep an eye on your top three. Yeah, this is all opening the door for Hedges, too. Three-way battle for the lead as they come back out onto the front straight. Boy, Hedges, he's, he wants to spoil both their dinner. He'll, ask, he'll have to be there in the end, though. The gravel pit's huge for Christensen. He went wide entering the last couple laps. He really needs to switch it up and try something different. This is where Christensen's been getting a great run the last couple laps. He's going to look outside. He's going to try to sneak underneath, though. Look, at he's going to try to sneak underneath. He switched it up. That's what he needs to do. There's nothing there. Christensen's gonna have one more shot as they come up and over the Polaris Razor, jumping down into Calamity Corner. Checkered flag is in hand. See, Christensen trying to look to the inside, has to get hard on the binders to turn the car. It's gonna be Laterno with the win this afternoon. Boy, what a run by Christensen. He is really, really quick. Absolutely, I mean, you gotta give some credit though to Laterno. Christensen was throwing every trick that he could think of at Laterno, and Laterno just kept fighting off all those advances. So definitely a, a well-deserved win by Laterno. Christensen was second, Hentges was third.
Yeah, looks like Bushmaker. How about that? RJ Lego just a couple weeks after going from starting 16th up to third position at ERX. Here in round seven, he started 15th, finishes in the top five. So. Wow, what a Lego run by Lego. Only five seconds back at the end, but a lot, a lot of hard work done by Lego this afternoon. Thanks so much. Our third place finisher, Johnny Henches. Johnny, I want to know about some of the strategies out there. Perhaps some of that was watching positions one and two, seeing if someone might mess up and being able to capitalize. Yeah, there was definitely, I wanted to be right there. I was really just starting to get comfortable. I don't got very many laps, hard, about two on this track before today. So, uh, yeah, I was right there at the end. I really started to click and the race was coming together, but we ran out of laps. But congratulations to these two, they ran a very good race. Would you say that this one has to be a confidence booster now heading into tomorrow and the rest of the weekend now that you have more laps? Yeah, yeah, this is definitely good, uh, good for the confidence. Got my feet wet, got in the box, so that's good. Uh, I got to thank uh, my wife and my family, um, the Speedworks crew, is, they're, uh, Jeremy, they're all Eternals, everyone, they're great people. Uh, SM Henches, Henches Racing, thank you. Good job, well done. Congratulations for Johnny Henches in third. <laughs> Logan Christensen, our second place finisher. Logan, how much of an adrenaline rush was that, being able to put on a battle on such a bad fast track? I didn't hear it. <laughs> How much of an adrenaline rush was that to have a battle like you did throughout on such a fast track? Uh, it was pretty adrenaline packed. I, I mean, I tried to catch uh, Mikey as best as I could, and I could catch him, but he had the best lines in the corners, and I just couldn't get around him. For being a young kid, he really knows how to hold me off, so props to you, man. Congratulations. Who would you like to thank for this? I round? would like to thank uh, Will B. Logan. Uh, I don't think he's here today because uh, his sister-in-law passed away, so you know this is for him uh thank mrt and muscle uh wheels and carl's auto body and especially my uh fiance we're getting married next week so this is nothing uh <laughs> and uh just my family in general and my my uh, my dad especially so thank you very much congratulations logan christensen our second place finisher and mike letourneau a great start for you, you led early on, but talk to me about how much it was taking to hold off the pressure that was being put on you throughout. Oh, it took a lot. I felt uh, Logan in the back of me, he, I knew it was right there, but I wasn't, I was just trying to hold him off. Who would you like to thank for the win? I'd like to thank Speedworks, Fox, Hoosier, my mom and dad, Trello, uh, and everyone else I forgot. Congratulations for the Trello Speedworks Arctic Cat. This is Mike Letourneau. Congratulations to our top three here in Sportsman Side by Side. Back to you guys. Josick. Number 867 is Tyrone Arnison. 820 is Braden Boshaw. 838 is Charlie Wilson. 899 is Scott Heikla. And 817 is Sean Bruski. 16 trucks and Brent. There's a whole bunch of fast guys. Well, the green flag is flowing. I don't know if Nick Bing got a good start. Something happened to Nick Bing. Who will come in the first turn first? Just a big group of trucks. Looks like Wilson, maybe. Kenny Wilson pulls the whole shot in front of his hometown crowd. How about that? Wild man Willie Freshour out of the gates in second. I wow. want to say that's Holcher in third there. Looks like Willie already lost a headlight on that board. Boy, Wilson out front, and it looks like Holger in the 844 running third. Wilson tiptoeing his way through the gravel pit, doesn't want to go too fast. Here comes Holger alongside a fresh hour. That wild man Willie with those cab lights up on top looking good, running in second place. There's Holger. Visser entered this race on a three race win streak dating back to Dirt City and then the two rounds at ERX. So he's another guy to watch out for as well. There's Ben Holger in the 844. Look at the track. The yeah, moisture is crazy. There. Yeah, it's very, very slippery going to Argonne turn. Look at Wilson still holding on to the lead. Kudos to him. Pulling hole shot here at his hometown track. 
Yeah, him and Wild Man Willie really are running away from the rest of this field. We've seen Wild Man Willie mix it up in the, in the front of the, the pack a couple different times before, but oh, uh, Wilson's well, got a little crossed up. It's got to be slick down there, although you see a lot of dust as well. Here yeah, we go, side by side, race for the lead. Wild Man Willie Freshour is going to take over the lead from Ken Wilson. Here comes Wilson to the bottom in Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one. You notice in that 180 by the starting line, Shady Wilson came in a little too hot and heavy. And you really got to be patient, especially on the first couple laps. It's really, really wet. You don't know how your truck or your tires are going to handle it. Yeah, sometimes one tiny mistake is really all it, it comes down to. But look at Ken Wilson. Great run down the hill. He's looking to the inside of Wild Man Billy as they head out to the Polaris Razor Gravel Pit. Oh, look at this. Maybe a slide shot. Yeah, look at Wilson. Wilson. Wilson trying to cross him up. They're side by side. They're going to bang doors a little bit. Still side by side as they head up to Polaris Razor Jump. Look at Fresh Hour knocking it out of the gas. Here comes Wilson to the inside. Yeah, Fresh Hour's got to be careful. You don't want to get stuck on the outside as we see a puff of smoke from Kenny Wilson. Uh oh, hopefully that's not a transmission issue going down on Kenny Wilson. Here comes Fresh Hour to the inside once again. These guys are having fun out front. Yeah, you can tell it's slick down there as Wild Man Willie got a little bit crossed up. Here comes Ben Holzer now. Here comes Kyle Cooper. Look at Kyle Cooper in the 873. He wants a piece of the top three. Here comes Ben Holzer. Ben Holzer now making contact. Holzer goes around. Yeah, Kenny Wilson went around down in the Argonne corner. So that should be that Wild Man Willie Fresh Hour is your race leader right now, but look who's behind him. Here comes Cooper to the inside. Boy, Kyle Cooper out, great. Willie Fresh out, here comes Visser, Nick Visser now in the top three. Wild Man Willie, though, great run on the outside. Terrific run right now for Fresh Hour. About a lap and a half in the books here. Yeah, Visser has now gotten around Cooper, so Visser second on the race course, and it's Cooper. Holcher, Boshaw, Big, Wilson, Pachosik, and all the rest. Fresh Hour is showing a little smoke. No harm, no foul to the outside of that truck. Look at him just plowing through that cushion chain. Definitely the heavy, loamy dirt. They want to stay to that inside. Here comes Nick Visser. Visser's going to shift to the inside of Fresh Hour. Can he make the pass stick? This work gets tricky on exit. It's slick down there. You're going to see Wild Man Willie get a run back on the left-hand side of Visser. It's a drag race, and it looks like Visser is going to take over the lead now. Nick Visser trying to make it four wins in a row if he can hold on and win here. Again, very slick down there in Calamity Corner. Boy, Visser is so fast. He really knows how to put his laps together, especially here at Cranon. Look at Fresh Hours running right through the blue groove, and you watch Visser. He's just carrying his speed, barely missing that inside berm. And it's so tricky. I, got, I was able to drive these trucks for a couple of years, and they're so much fun. You really don't want to get out of shape with them because you scrub all that speed. You can go from second to tenth. But when you're out in the lead, you just pick your lines, pick your marks. Don't overdrive the truck because it's so easy to do. Brent, we're about to have one heck of a battle here for second place. Kyle Cooper is putting a ton of pressure right now on Wild Man Willie Freshour. Look at this. Look at Holger going on the inside. Holger trying to get a two-for-one deal there on the hairpin. Holger going. those guys got around Freshour. Boy, Kyle Cooper showing a lot of speed this afternoon. Here comes Ben Holger. They're side-by-side side in turn one. 70-plus miles an hour coming off the front doubles. Holcher's on the inside. Cooper checked up a little bit as they enter turn two, and Holcher is going to take over second place. Holcher's really doing a fine job. Bonsai off that little fadeaway, just going into the gravel pit. Very, very high speeds, and this is where you really have to hit your mark. Don't go over that cushion like Kyle Cooper did. Look at that gap. You just see Holcher. Open it up about a three, four car lane gap over Kyle Cooper. Yeah, meanwhile, look at the lead that Visser has opened up over the rest of this field. Battle for second, still hot and heavy right now between Holcher and Cooper. Wild Man Willie's still having a pretty good run. He's in fourth. Holcher definitely the man on the move right now. Went from fifth to second in about half a lap. 
Yeah, that truck really, really works. If you watch it going through the turns, it used to have a little bit of a push in the beginning parts of the year. Now he rotates it early and gets that truck to turn. Watch as he goes right before left. Gets the rear of that truck set. Look at that. That exit is so much better. There's fresh hour. Good start for him. Coming back towards Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one. Visser, Holcher, Cooper, Fresh Hour, your top four. Yeah, everybody kind of spaced out a little bit now, but I believe we will be coming to our mid race caution for next time past the finish line. Trey Bojan looks to be about six seconds behind our leaders. He's in fifth right now in the 802. Cooper's in third, about four seconds behind that man right there, Nick Visser. Now, Cooper's had some success here at Crandon, but I was talking to him earlier this week. He has never won a race on Crandon's long track. He's only ever won on the short configuration, so he's seeking his first long track win as there's our competition caution. Yeah, Shane, this race isn't over yet. These trucks are very, very quick, and who knows who is maybe saving a little bit for the second half of this race, especially it comes down to tires. You, you knew the track is going to throw a lot of moisture on it throughout the day. That's what you've seen race to race. And it goes to, are you on an all-terrain, you on a mud terrain? So you could have started off a little slippery. Now that we're getting down to that hard-packed surface, those all-terrains will really start biting. All right, we've got Haley Shandley trackside. Haley, what do you have for us? Just wanted to chime in with some information on our current second place position holder, Ben Holcher, who currently sits three in that points championship. He has been consistently fighting his way to the front of the pack this year. His best finish came in round five, where he garnered a second place finish at EIRX Motor Park. And in fact, that second place finish was on a brand new power plant. He is showing some tremendous speed here at Cranon International Off-Road Raceway. I'd say that motor is a good one. So keep your eyes on him. I know he's going to be gunning for that first place finish. All right, thanks, Haley. And yeah, definitely, Holcher has some magic working right now as he's second, and, you know, he's been on a charge through the field over this last couple rounds, and the only guy riding a hotter streak right now than Holcher has got to be Nick Visser with three race wins in a row coming into this race, and he's out front at halfway. Yeah, definitely, and then you look down our screen, the A spot, Joey Majosek, two points coming in, he had that lead by so we'll have to see if Joey can work his way up into the top five, help his points, Dave. But right now, it's Visser, Holcher, Cooper, Fresh Hour, your top four. Watch Ben Holcher. He has the speed. The car works very, very well. Watch that gravel pit to be a big, big factor. There's Nick Big now. Big had a horrible start. Finds himself in fourth, or fifth, actually. Watch as they're going to wait to take that restart flag. There goes Visser. Yeah, Visser took off pretty much right away at that first cone. Pretty even restart. Nobody really able to gain an advantage there. Visser just has so much raw speed in that truck, though. He's just able to accelerate away from everybody else. Yeah, he really does. He pulled a big gap on that restart. Here comes Ben Holger. Watch Holger. He needs to try to go to that inside. He needs to run a half a line off of our leader. If he wants to get to it, look at him. He creeps in just a little bit on exit. There is a faster line through there. Four laps to go here in Super Stock Truck. Bolger getting a little bit sideways. Yeah, he scrubbed a little bit of speed. He don't want to open up the door. Kyle Cooper will slap him on the back and take that spot away. Holger just trying to drive the wheels off that thing. He just needs to keep going forward. Oh, he makes a little mistake there. Watch Cooper. Going to try to go underneath. Yeah, it might come down to who can make fewer mistakes here in the second half. You watch these. You watch the front ends and the rears of these trucks, and they have, they have what you call a brake bias. You watch as the front locks up, the rear lock up at a different time. They can actually put more forward brake or more rear brake, so it's pretty cool. Look at this, Wild Man Willie Freshour got into Cooper. They both go around. Freshour coming in there, collecting another truck. Here's Holger once again coming back towards Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one. There's Nick Bitzer. 
Boy, Visser went really, really wide. Yeah, Visser has about a seven or eight car length lead now over Holter. Cooper still in third. Boy, Kyle Cooper in that 873, the old Rough Riders look forward. There's Trey Bojaw. But Nick Bing can't say enough about Nick Bing, last year's points champion. Trying to work his way up back into the top three. There's Trey Bojaw on the 802. You see Braden Bojaw on the left of your screen falling out of this race early. Tough, tough break for the rookie here in 2020. Riding along now with Nick Visser. Trying to make this four wins in a row. I mean, we, we talked about some earlier win streaks that we had this year, but to do that at Superstock Truck is, is really, really remarkable. Yeah, we have tons of trucks throughout this race season and last year. You never know who's gonna win. I mean, people are like, who's gonna pull a whole shot? I don't know, because who's gonna come out of the gate with their head on straight? Cooper throttle is wide open going in that back section. Trying to chase down the top two. There's Fresh Hour. Yeah, tough break for Wild Man Willie. Running out front early on. Well, I see the glimpse of Holger. He's just sitting right there. About four or five car lengths behind our race leader, Nick Visser. And then they gap out after that. Yeah, really, at this point, it's a two-car race for the lead. Nick Big running in fourth. Wow, Big just all crossed up, pitching it off the bar turn. Back again, Fishy, pop a beadlock off the side of that truck. Yeah, he's got to be careful because Dre Bolshaw is within striking distance. This should be lap six out of eight this time by. Visser, Holger, Cooper, Bing, Boshaw, your top five, two to go. Still a lot of wet spots on this track, Brent. Yeah, they've been straddling that inside little chicane after the start the finish line there. Trying to just go through it is another story. They're just trying to stay in that dry groove. Look at the sun. Maybe it could be playing a factor heading in that back. Yeah, we talked about it before during the 450 mod cards. We saw one of the drivers holding a hand up to, to block out the sun. There's Nick Bing running fourth. Look at Trey Bullshaw coming in all hot and heavy in that 180. Trying to rotate it early. It's so hard to come in there with a super stop truck and pinch it off so tight because on exit you just lose all that ground as you see Nick Big stretching away that gap once again. Here's Machosik. Machosik's now up into the top six, so trying to get as many points as possible as Visser should be coming to the white flag this time by a couple turns to go. Yeah, Visser still running strong out front. Probably has about a 12 car length lead over Holger. Such a cool shot by our drone. Visser's really cleaned up that corner nicely as he's done throughout the second half of this race. One of my favorite turns right here, Shane. You come in this finish line turn, you just rotate it in. He's pushing through there, but running that cushion at the same time, so it's carrying his speed. White flag out for the 880. Looks like he still holds about a two second advantage over Holter. That's a lot of ground to make up with only one lap left. They say you really gotta get into that flow and that's what Visser has done this afternoon. Once again, like you said, he's on, a, he's on some bit of a win streak here in 2020.
Nick Visser on his way to a fourth straight win at Superstock. Tell you what, though, Holzer's not going away. He's going to have to shoot his shot down here in the gravel pit, but... Yeah, there's no hope, hopefully, for Visser to make any kind of mistake, but watch his Holzer, Holzer, he needs to try to race through the bottom. If you're close enough, try to take away any little bit of speed that Visser had, but look at that same line as before, exiting very, very nicely, and I think he's going to do it, Jay. Yeah, Visser just not making any mistakes, not opening the door at all for Holzer or any of the rest of the guys. One last time in the Calamity Corner as the sun sets in the background. Nick Visser takes the win here around seven super stock truck. Holcher across the line second, Kyle Cooper third. That class is never disappointing, Brent, I swear. No, absolutely not. Anyone can win at any given time, but the Porsche Chevrolet of Nick Visser is going to take a big win this afternoon. Holcher second, Cooper third, Bojan with a good run in fourth. Then it's Bing, Machosik, Shunk, and Jorgensen, your top seven, so. Man, Nick Visser's got to have the rest of this class really second-guessing themselves, kind of scratching their uh, their heads, so to speak. Yeah, definitely. He really laid down some great lap times. Nick Visser and his crew putting together a top. That's right. Kyle Cooper, Kyle, a very fruitful race as far as that points championship goes for you. I know you for sure are a title contender this season. Give us a reaction to this round. How was it for you? It was tough. Uh, started out and with a land rush within 50 feet, you know if you have a good start or a bad one. And I knew right away I had a pretty bad one. So I uh, was able to make a couple quick moves and then... It was really dicey. I went through all my tear-offs in the first two laps, and I was wiping my visor the rest of the time. And driving into the sun on the back stretch was dicey. That's what cost me the lead because these guys got tangled. I, my helmet was covered in dirt, and I was starting to drive off towards the grass in the land rush, and then Nick got by me. And uh, But all in all, like you said, it was a good points day. I kept tabs on Joey, and I saw had trucks on him, so I knew it was uh, going to be a good points day. But I got to give it up. I got to thank the Lord. He blessed us with a great day. Uh, bless me with a great crew, great family. I got a ton of guys here this weekend. Uh, classic instruments, dynamic converter, Wolverine Performance Chief Super Shop. Uh, Nick's got to slow down a little bit. He's been getting a lot of these wins. We got to slow him up tomorrow. But uh, we'll give him a run. It'll be good. Well, I know you're a guy that can make that happen. Congratulations, Kyle Cooper in third. And in second, Ben Holter. out there in order to move forward like you did in that one? Well, I, I got a pretty good start. I think I came out about third and got tangled up in the back um, with some guys who spun out. And I back and forth fifth for a little while and I raced past Kyle again in turn one on the outside and got myself back up in the second and was able to stay there. And let's talk about after that. After that competition caution, you know, you guys, we can throw a blanket over you guys. The racing is always so tight and competitive in this class. So speak to the competitive nature of the Superstock truck division. It's the best class out there for sure, but these are some awesome guys. We're all friends on and off the track, and it's just some really good, tight racing out there. Who would you like to thank? Um, my wife, first and foremost, for letting me do this. That's right! That's right! Corey! for putting in all the extra work and Ron and, Ed and everybody in my family who just keeps busting ass to make this work and Holter Brothers, Nick Holter Construction, Corey's Crank and Nail, Yokohama Tires for stepping up and getting me on their tire program and yeah. Ben Holter, a job well done. Congratulations. <laughs> and we're going to call him four feet, four wins in a row for Nick Visser. able to get this one done here today? Uh, well, just being patient at the beginning. Uh, I kind of got pinched off coming into turn one, and I just know that he ain't going to win in turn one, so I backed off and played it safe. And uh, The track, I, I thought it was going to be muddy. You know, it was a little bit, and it just turned out really good. And uh, these Yokohama tires have just been tearing it up on the track, and I, I can't thank them guys enough. But uh, yeah, just patience and uh, thanks to my spotter, Luke. He always just keeps me calm. That's the biggest thing with me is I like somebody just talking and let me know how it's going. And uh, 
Other than that, it's, the track didn't turn out beautiful, and I can't thank all my sponsors enough. Uh, Parsons, Builder Service, uh, sorry, Advanced Best Management, uh, uh, Pack, Mac Daddy Lawn Care, uh, the rest of it. I'm sorry, I, I just get speechless up here. Thanks everybody, my family, my crew, my wife, my kids, and they put up with this crazy thing we do, and I just can't thank everybody enough. Thank you. If, if and let me ask you too, as you pull into victory lane, you're clearly pumped up, but as you get the helmet off, it almost looked like it was a, a sense of relief for you. So walk me through those first emotions as you get the helmet off in victory lane. Well, just, uh, you know, I, I made it through the race. You know, at the beginning of this year, it was tough getting through the race and uh, getting around these guys and make sure I just don't screw up. And, you know, from there, it's me. You know, all, all I can do is just keep pushing the truck and make sure I keep it to hold it together. And, just hit my line. That's all. I, that's all I can do. And you do it well. And you do it well, she says. Congratulations, Nick Visser, on the big win. Race is here at Cranon International Off-Road Raceway, and on track right now, Shane is pro buggy. Absolutely, a good full field of these guys here this weekend. 14 cars are going to take the green flag tonight for round number seven. Starting on the front row for Marshfield, the number 84 is J.D. Coran. Alongside him from Kingsley, Michigan, number 13 is Chris Coughlin. Dave Vandenelsen is in the number 12. Mike Kirkham is number 56. Chris Vandenelsen is number 66. Number two is Ryan Schwabe. Number 31 is Mark Steinhardt. Number nine is Mike Hester. He is your current points leader. Number 85 is Elwood Nemi. Number three is Tom Schwartzberg. He's been here all 51 years of racing at Grandin. Unbelievable. And we're about to go green also in the field. Walker Flannery, Brandon Johnson, Mike Meister, and Brady Whitlock. Well, here we go, Shane. Pro buggy there at the start of this race. J.D. Coran had some bad luck earlier this year. And Gerald and the guys back in the shop basically had to rebuild the car, but here they are, and he's out front early on. But Coughlin, he had a really good run Sunday at ERX a couple weeks ago, trying to stack a couple of good runs in a row here. Yeah, he's brought the headlights out for this one here. Here comes Vandenelsen. Vandenelsen goes to the inside already, and we have some contact. Yeah, Kirk That's Kirk and Vandenelsen getting into one another a little bit there. Here comes Schwabe. Looks like Ryan Schwabe coming to the inside, the number two. Trying to sweep his way in, do a little slide job on this first lap. Track looks in prime shape, Shane. Yeah, absolutely. Still that one wet spot that we saw earlier in Superstock. They head back out on the front straight. It's Coran, Coglin, the top two, and they had turn number two. Yeah, Coran and Gollum on Instagram, they were working so hard on that car. And Van Gerald, Mikey Van Hool actually was touching on that car. And I mean, when you want to win, you want that car to be set up right, you got to go to the guys that have done it for a lot of years. And anytime you put Van Gerald and Mike Van Hool on one sense, you know you're doing something right. Here we go, battle for second, heating up as Kirkham putting some pressure on Coughlin as they go down towards Calamity Corner. Tell you what, for all the, the trials and tribulations that J.D. Coran has faced, he's looking very strong out front early on. Yeah, he's looking really, really smooth as here comes Michael Meister now. Yeah, Mike Meister, he was your world champion in 2018 here at Super Buggy, so no stranger to finishing on top of the podium. What a points championship as well in the class. Making his 2020 debut after taking a few years off. Meister had to get out of the gas a little bit, made a little contact. Here comes Coughlin. Once again on that outside, here comes Michael Meister. Meister's trying to make it three wide. Ryan Schwabe. Schwabe has his oh, hands going down. That's trouble for Chris Vandenels. It looks like he just barely hit the wall there. But he's going to fall back a couple spots as we're taking a look at the battle up here in the front. That's Schwabe holding off Meister. And there goes Meister to the inside. He's going to try to make that car as wide as possible. Independent suspension, open wheel cars. You really don't want to make any kind of contact. Wheel to wheel, you go for one heck of a ride as they're entering into the gravel pit this time by. Lights are on here in Brandon for this final race of the day. Now trying to chase down your 
race leader, J.D. Duran. You see, that's the number 74, Brady Whitlock, all the way from Phoenix, Arizona. He's going to go to the inside of Conlin. Yeah, Conlin really has a problem. He, something's wrong with that car. I don't know if he's having issues with the power steering. He's having a hard time turning it in that number 13. There's Coughlin again. Meister. Yeah, looking back behind him, Coughlin, the next car in line there, running in sixth is Mike Hester. He's your points leader. You know, Mike made his career wins after picking up two at PRX a couple weeks ago, but nowhere near the front so far. There's Michael Meister once again going on the inside. He's holding down a race leader. Coran in that number 84. Meister's going to look inside and clam in corner. Not a ton of traction down there on the inside. Coran's going to hold him off for now. Yeah, you can obviously tell that Michael Meister is faster than our race leader, Coran. 310's behind to be exact. Going over the front jumps, coming by the barn turn once again. As you see the caution playing down on our camera, we'll have to see what had happened. Four laps in this 10 lap race. So it's Coran, Meister, Whitlock, Schwabi, Coughlin, yeah, Brady, and Hester. Brady Whitlock started all the way at the tail end of this field and he's worked his way up into the top three. Great run by Whitlock. A lot of clean air for our race leader, JD Coran. Trying to figure out what's going on. Oh, look at this. Well, this is a first for me, Brent. I've never seen a delayed race due to a dog out on the racetrack. Oh, wow. Look at that. Getting close to the cars. Have to be very careful through there. Oh, we'll take a moment here. We'll uh, corral the loose animals and... Richie Kulov, they're both smiling in the truck. Like, yeah. when have we ever had a caution for a dog? Boy, Coran, he just needs to keep doing what he's doing. Hit his marks time and time again. Very, very quick this afternoon. But Mike Meister, he's past champion. Very, very quick. All right, we've got Haley Shanley down trackside with some more information for us. Haley, what do you have? I heard you guys mention just a few moments ago, Mike Hester, he of course left rounds five and six, claiming wins 97 and 98. I know his sights are set on surpassing, reaching 100 wins, career wins here at Crandon International Off-Road Raceway on World Championship Weekend. Another driver in the field who is certainly no slouch here in Crandon is Mark Steine Steinhardt. He has 12 World Championships to his credit in the 1600 buggy. He is chasing his first here in the Pro Buggy Division. Thank you very much, Haley. And yeah, good, good news if you were wondering about the fate of the dog. Looks like the dog is doing just fine. See it there on the uh, big screen down below. Give him a treat. Put him in the truck. Let's yeah. go. Dogs can be very enthusiastic race fans, too, just like you and I can, Brent. Oh, for sure. So it's J.D. Coran up front, the 84, Mike Meister, the 94, Whitlock in the 74, and Schwabi and Coughlin. Your top five here this afternoon. There's a good look at Van and Elsens, both of them in the 66 and the 12. Yeah, I'm curious to see if Hester can uh... Maybe turn up the intensity and find some mojo a little bit here in the second half. It's, it's really strange to not see him competing for a podium spot. How about that, Brent? See that number three car? That's Tom Schwartzberg. He raced in the very first brush run race here at Crandon in 1970. He's been involved as a racer and on the administration side for all 51 years of racing here. That is crazy. That number three still, car been around a long, long time. Still shows up every year. Just loves this sport to death. Yeah, Coming when I when I spoke curve. earlier about how how the history of racing at Crandon is a beautiful symphony, well, that's a guy that's played a lot of really important notes as well. So, yeah, gotta recognize Tom Schwartzberg, 51 years and counting here at Crandon. 
51 years for the 51st anniversary here this weekend. So kudos to him to keep coming back year after year and still get behind the wheel. Brent, we're just about to go back to green flag racing. J.D. Coran is going to take control of this field, but he's got Meister on his bumper. Here we go, green flag. Coran really needs to put it in high gear. Michael Meister all over the back door on this restart. i got to watch out for Whitlock there in third, too, because he has been absolutely out of charge to that uh, first half of that race. Well, here comes Meister. Meister's going to look to the inside the gravel pit. Whitlock, too, really throwing it in hard on able to slam the door for now and Ryan Schwalbe is right there with Whitlock as well. Yeah, you're right, Shane. Look at Whitlock. Come on that outside. Watch him try to cross over. He's going to go to the bottom, try to tiptoe his way through. Yeah, there's just not a lot of traction down there. We'll see. Yeah, Coran moved over a little bit. A little bit of uh, aggressive defense there by J.D. Coran. All clean and as you say, no harm, no foul. Coran now. Out. Yeah, there you go, back up front, like you were saying, Shane, Michael Meister, Grant in second now. Right off the back side, here comes Whitlock. Yeah, Whitlock's going to look down to the inside of the gravel pit once again. Big strong run, throws it in there, almost backs it into that corner. Grant with a little bit better run on the outside, and Grant again. Yeah, Grant, over and, and Whitlock ran out of room again. Yeah, Grant had a nice run coming out of the gravel pit, and then Whitlock, he kind of scrubbed some speed that 74. Coming by what will be the finish line. Green flag still out, five laps to go that time by. They're coming back in front of the crowd. Look at that track just changing so much throughout this race. Trying to find that fine line on the cushion once again is Grant. Here comes Whitlock. Whitlock wants a piece of it again. Let's see if he can get it done in the gravel pit. Yeah, he's going to try another run down this Skybox Hill into the gravel pit. Doesn't look like he's quite close enough, but man, Whitlock is absolutely rolling this car into this gravel pit corner. A little bit more conservative that time. Yeah, here comes Whitlock again. Going to come off the Polaris Razor jump. Almost landed on the back of Coran. He's going to go way to the inside. Try the power move again. Coran gets a little bit crossed up. There's going to be a drag race coming out of Calamity Corner. They both made a little bit of a mistake, yeah. so it kind of equaled out. Here comes Whitlock again. He's kind of trying to not make contact a little bit more on the binders there coming through that infield. There's J.D. Coran. Whitlock falling back just a little bit for now. Oh, there he comes to the inside, though. Whitlock has tried a move in just about every corner on this abbreviated race course. And he's going to try something different to find it in the line. Yeah, look at that. Just power sliding through the gravel pit. Yeah, he's trying all different kinds of ways to get by. J.D. Coran bonsai off that jump one more time. Look at Coran go wide. Yeah, yeah. that gap open. Oh, look at this. Last well, power J.D. Coran just a little bit. Looks like Whitlock might have had a run on the inside there, and he has not hit to check up for the squad car. That's uh, Johnson, Brandon Johnson from Grand Rapids, Michigan, who's parked down there on the inside of Calamity Corner. This battle for second place is continuing. It's been three whole laps, and these guys are just picking it out. Boy, you look at Coran, that left rear, it looks like it's majorly dipped in on the top of that tire. You wonder if something might be going wrong, or maybe that's just his setup in that left rear. Yeah, I'm not sure, Brent. It looks like there's maybe a little bit of damage to the left rear corner of that car. It definitely doesn't look natural the way that left rear tire is sitting. No, it definitely is tilted in on the top, so we'll see. Here comes Whitlock. Whitlock just playing that single file game still. There's slower traffic, almost getting into one of our trucks. Whitlock just barely missing that with a couple laps to go that time by. You know, something that's standing out to me right now is you can tell that Coran is getting more and more comfortable with this car. You can see that he's driving a lot more confidently. You know, not, not strictly just playing defense, but he knows that there's parts of this track where he's faster than Whitlock and he doesn't have to protect it. No, that's absolutely correct. He's running the fast line, he's running that cushion, so maybe in some of the corners Whitlock gets on the inside, kind of goes, hey, I'm here, but there's no grip on exit, so if Coran just keeps running the line, he'll be okay. Yeah, 
look who else is in the mix now. Schwalbe coming on strong, trying to gain some more ground on Whitlock. Boy, Ryan Schwalbe coming on strong here in the end part of this race. Here comes Whitlock again. Grant says no, not right now, uh -oh. but oh! Grant pushed just a little bit wide. That's going to put Whitlock up into second place. White flag is out. Meanwhile, Mike Meister just way out front. Yeah, he's a 10 second lead over the rest of this field. Yeah, he's checked out on the field at 9.627 gap. All right, let's see if JD Coran can battle back here. Yeah, he needs to use some of those fast lines he was working earlier in the race. He needs to just stay a little bit wider and come back to the bottom if he has any kind of shot at this spot. Here comes Schwabi again in the ground a bit. We'll see if Coran can get a run. Good Not run though by Grant. There. Checkered flag is out. Mike Meister will take the win here in round seven pro buggy. Battle for seconds gonna be coming to the line here. Yeah, Grant tried to shoot his shot one last time, but Whitlock able to hold on for second. Grant third, Schwabi fourth. And it looks like it'll be Hester, Steinhardt, Kirkham, Vandenelsen, and all the rest. Boy, Mike Meister just checked out on the field this second half. Very, very quick race car driver, the number 94. You notice the red plate behind, like we say all day long. He's the pa he's the pass points champion, and there is our world. Thanks so much. This guy in third, he's shaking the gremlins and the bad luck. How meaningful is this podium finish for you? Well, I tell you what, it means the world to me, and this is totally dedicated. Matt Gerald, I totally wrecked the car at ERX, wrecked the car from the uh, driver's seat back. Took, uh, I don't know, over a month of constant work from him, Mike Vandenubel, Chad Rayford, and a, a group of others. And uh, a big hit to my wallet, but we got her back. And uh, this is to you guys. Um, they do all the hard work, I get the glory. So way to go, Matt. Thank you so much. It was a blast. Uh, maybe we could pick, uh, change all these races at nighttime. I kind of dig it. <laughs> it worked out well for you. Who else do you want to thank? Who else has helped put you up here? Well, just uh, Matt Gerald Racing, my wife Jill, all my kids for uh, standing behind me through uh, good and bad. Thank you, Jill. And uh, we need to uh, thank uh, Funko Motorsports, Amsoil, Shock Tech, um, Bob Burkholz Motors and Trannies, and uh, who else am I forgetting, Matt? Everybody, thank you. Congratulations, that's one happy wheel man, J.D. Coran in third. And Brady Whitlock, Brady, you were shooting for the stars there. It seems like every corner you were throwing something at him for that position. Break down that moment for me where you were able to claim second. Uh, we had to start at the back, and uh, we knew it was going to be hard to go through the field. And uh, we did awesome. Bradley Morris kept me clean for the most part. And uh, most of that was me. That wasn't the perfect r r line. But uh, we just didn't have what it had, or uh, we couldn't catch Michael Meister, so. Who would you like to thank for this strong performance? I had to thank my dad, uh, Danny Fodrell. He just got in the uh, Off-Road Hall of Fame this week. Uh, Fodrell Motorsports, my mom, uh, my kids and my girlfriend are somewhere in between Ryan Lander and here, so they missed it. But uh, everyone that helps me, Bradley Morris, um, Every, uh, Dave and Dylan in the hot pits, and uh, just everyone that comes and helps me. Thank you. Good job, well done. Brady Whitlock in second. And your winner here in Pro Buggy, our 2018 world champion, Michael Meister. This was a commanding win for you, almost 10 seconds of distance here. Congratulations on that. You know, how good does it feel to start out World Championship Weekend on such a strong note? You know, it feels really good. I was really worried about, you know, this is my first race back in over a year, and I was really nervous as far as how I'm going to feel and if I'm going to be on pace. And as soon as we hit practice uh, yesterday, I felt really good. We did a great setup on car, and uh, we took a little uh, risk on my tire. And boy, it's so mo moist out there with it being evening. The cars were just hooked up, and it felt really good. Well, it took you no time to find the speed. Congratulations again. Who would you like to thank? Yeah, I want to, I kind of funded myself this round, but so Michael Meister Logging, uh, Never Lift Apparel, Armor Coat, uh, Pomps Tire, uh, Luke Stubbs for uh, doing an awesome tune on my car and getting it on the dyno last week. It really helped. It's nice and smooth. 
and uh, VP Buell, Re JP Remington, and uh, my dad, and Caitlin, my girlfriend, and then Brad, he, my buddy, did spotting. He did an awesome job, kept me safe, and uh, kept us going out front. Uh, but thank you. Let him hear you, ladies and gentlemen, for Pro Buggy. This is Michael Meister, your winner. Back to you guys.